So my dear doctor, this is Dr. Sharia. We are going to start our class today, which is a very, very important topic like uh, the pediatric child with rash. All right. Yes, unfortunately, the uh, because there was some updates and hence like the slide I was changing a little bit. Hence, that was the reason uh, that I couldn't send you the slide because I had to modify that one. That is one of the reason, but I do send you some of the page numbers so that you can at least check some of the cases. And maybe you, you guys have seen, um, if I just mentioned about some of the hot cases of nowadays, you know, these are some of the 2019 and 2020 cases, but some of the other cases, my suggestion you should study like eczema, seborrheic dermatitis, all right, so herpes, like, you know, so this kind of, Certain cases has history of tested in 2017 and 18 as well. If you check, uh, but main priority is always um, you try to finish the last one year or two years. That's the plan actually. So these are some of the cases from the kids with child with the rash in 2019 and 20. I want you to see these cases first of all um, and give some opinion actually, like. Um, Let's start in different way. Let's uh, uh, talk about some keywords. But before that, let me wait for some of the other doctors to come. Let's wait for them for one minute. I think uh, still five, six more doctors. I think hopefully they'll be joining. So uh, let's just start. But for starting, as I said, let's take one or two minutes so that everyone can join the class. All right. So we are starting in just a minute, actually. All right, guys. All right, thank you for your attention, guys. So I hope so, yes, so we can see some of the more doctors have joined. Uh, before I start one more time, I want to clear as my voice is clear and the video is visible. So just write in the comment section, visible and loud, if it's everything is clear. All right, thank you so much for confirming. Okay, before we start, as we see, we have some of the hot cases actually, okay? Let me uh, try to add two more. I mean, say eczema, even though 2000, maybe 18 topic and maybe there was seborrheic and also i can add insect bite okay so there was a case you know there was a case with a single bite and there was a case with anaphylactic actually 
So these were the things you need to keep it in mind. The basic thing in a child with a rash is your approach. Now, how we can approach a case with child with rash? Say, first we have to see what is our task, right? So it depends on the task. If they're asking to you to take the history, you will be focusing taking on the history. So most cases, how the tasks are tested, given how the tasks are given history, after that, like the PEFE, there is no physical examination in pediatrics, by the way, except for a neonatal assessment. Sometimes we haven't seen in recent time. So it means in pediatric, there is no uh, actual physical examination. Most cases, they're PEFE. So your case would be task, history, PEFE, uh, investigation, and the diagnosis. This will be one of the type of task. So this is, if I say task, one another type of task would be you can say task two so task two how it would be task uh, in that case they will ask you for they will give you history and the physical examination it will be given in the doorway you understand the word doorway guys doorway means where you were standing when you were starting the exam while you were standing that is we call doorway so history and physical examination uh, probably it could be given in this case. Okay, so given. So this can be one of the type of the case. And apart from that, they will be asking you uh, diagnosis, DD, and the management. Now, by the way, child with rash cases, I would say task two comes more commonly than task one. But task one, you know, it depends on the cases. If the case is more demanding on taking the history, they will also give you cases like that. Everyone clear this part, how the tasks are coming? Everyone, we can, we can a uh, little response, how the tasks are coming. So all the cases would be child with rashes, but one of them would be task one. They will be asking you history, physical PFE, investigation, and the diagnosis, up to diagnosis. So management is not coming. You see here, management is not coming. Another task to it can be, History physical examination, small findings would be given. I'll show you how. Yes. Will the doorway? Uh, no, 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 like <laughs> it will be, I don't think. Yes. So, you know, history physical examination, like no clock, no information, those things will not be available. So, history physical examination, uh, then uh, diagnosis, TD, and the management. These are the things. All right. So, this is the complete one. Now, let's come before I go and do role play and talk about child with the rashes quickly. Let's jump into the trailer like it is always said, you know, you should release your trailer first, then you uh, release your movie, isn't it? How many of you I'm sure like, you know, nowadays watch trailer first before checking a drama series or a movie. I'm sure the trailer is quite popular nowadays. All right. So let's uh, start with the trailer. So your case would be most cases child with rash and they will be giving you associated problems. Now, my first in thing it, that comes to my mind, am I able to make the diagnosis? I mean, when I'm standing on the doorway. Now, what are the key points that will help me understanding my cases, first of all, because you see there are a branch of cases in child with the rash. So my priority is here to make a proper diagnosis first. So we should not take that much time. Uh, if the information is proper, in that case, it should take 20 seconds maximum to diagnose the case. Like just read the case and make a diagnosis. It's it, as simple. Some cases, things are not clear because they will be giving you a child with a rash, then ask you to take history. It means you will go inside and take the history, then you will get to know the diagnosis. Clear? Okay, so this is one of them. Now, if we exclude one by one, uh, in case of HSP, what do you think? HSP means what, guys? Excellent, guys. Henoscholin parpura. Now you tell me, guys. Henoscholin parpura. Remember, age is important here. What age group you are expecting? Below five, over five. Below five. Below five. Is it? All right. Okay, we'll see that with the age. So one confusion is coming here, right? With the HSP case, HSP case. 
we'll see that i'll clear that one now next thing is coming you can you can already cross check guys like in our ch and some of the guideline what age is for the hsp okay i'm not telling it now i'll tell it very soon now next point is coming what type of rash because i'm talking about the rashes what type of rash is expected in hsp is it a blanchable or non blanchable rash non blanching non blanching okay so now now my next point is coming that is a non blanching rash is there any other condition which is associated with non blanching rash Bla rash which does not blanch on pressure naysseria meningitis excellent yes. uh, well done yes naysseria meningitis yes like another one yes uh, but in case of kawasaki there is an additional line we add a d squamated rash okay we'll come to that point later uh, anything with hsp what is the distribution of the rash remember there is a more discharge it's on the lower yes. limbs meninges lower leg to up to the bottom okay bottom. so there is over the buttocks distribution. and lower legs yes so these are the points so age i'm not telling you now i'll tell you soon but you know as far as i remember it's more than 4 years like in usually the cases uh, sometimes uh, given uh but you know uh, i think uh, scarlet is one and hsp one i think hsp is also uh, i think the whole age group uh, is possible uh, but i think in scarlet i think it's more than 4 year if i'm not mistaken in scarlet it's always more than 4 year in case of hsp it can be less than 4 year it can be more than 4 year that's how we remember in case of hsp actually okay we'll clear that one very soon okay so there's a distribution of rash so from leg up to the buttocks so this is one of the thing anything special can we add here i mean if i think at investigation wise is there any other point that will help us to differentiate tell me the platelet count very clear answer thrombocytopenia yes okay so someone said is correct okay 2 to 8 years very well done okay okay come on now for hsp yes uh, platelet count is sorry i didn't hear platelet count should be i mean normal decrease increase decrease is it guys normal normal platelet count sir yes yes and because these are the points this is the you know very very important finding in terms of pfe because these are the point examiner is noticing okay so these findings where you know we have asked some of the candidates they said when even if you see in marwan notes even you ask some examiner they will tell the you know when they went into the cbc and lastly when they ask about the office test and something uh, they get to know about the platelet count here actually so platelet count is normal which is helping to differentiate with others actually okay platelet is one another important finding you will find in the investigation that is urine do you know what is the finding in urine in case of in case of hsp uh, proteinuria and hematuria hematuria is it correct everyone everyone agree to this so rbc is visible so urine rbc urine interstitial nephritis yeah yes so urine showing rbc everyone clear with that one well done so these are the two important physical or i mean the investigation wise finding you will do the normal thing cbc crp with sr urine coagulation profile uh, then we'll for stool and then we'll go for ultrasound then special attention on like you know uh, so do i have any blood cards now guys please add some word these are the word is important like is there any blood card available is there any office test available like these are the thing it is available with the examiner actually he will tell you the interpretation of those thing or they will give you a paper or supply you have to see that one so in that case you will find platelet is normal and urine rbc either they will supply you that one or either they will tell you when you will ask exactly okay so okay blood cbc available what do you want to know so that's how they will be asking of an activity okay protein and creatine okay you can add that one yes protein is important yes because when you say urine the protein thing also comes yes definitely so uh, platelet and the urine okay so these are the some of the clear cut finding then if the case comes with history we usually start the case with the taking the history there's a nice mnemonic discharge i will show you that one but initially we started with the typical history what we have learned in the pediatrics we also ask about binds we also ask about tops 
So these are the mnemonic we ask, and then we come with the some specific history, actually. So specific history, like you can also ask, like especially how's the rash, do you have, what's the distribution, you know. This particular thing, you can go with the patient, you can go with the examiner as well, okay? Because few of the finding definitely patient don't know, all right? So those things, like example, is the rash is discommitted? Like to exclude the Kawasaki, this answer is belong to the examiner, all right? So these are the certain thing and there will be management. The management thing I'm not getting into, management thing you can do the role plan certain thing. Now let's come to meningitis. This is, a, I'm sure many of you are quite familiar with the meningitis, but few things we have to learn on the basis of uh, AMC. So in the meningitis, how do I know that is a meningitis case? Of course, most cases here also uh, camps with the rash problem, okay? So, and anything especially, can we differentiate with HSP vital versus the meningitis? What do you think, everyone? Fever, neck stiffness. Fever, fever and neck stiffness. Okay, fever, neck stiffness, agreed. Fever, high fever, better to say high fever. High yeah. fever, neck stiffness, okay. Uh, neck, neck stiffness, negative. You know, I'm an examiner, I'm telling neck stiffness, negative. It does it mean that it is not meningitis? Uh, most of the cases of meningitis associated with neck stiffness, true or false? True, sir. True. Um, not really, actually. Not not all not all the cases of meningitis associated with neck stiffness. Yes, exam-wise you can tell, but not all cases actually. Yes. All right, so the next stiffness, like sometime they will give you a positive finding, not all cases they'll give, like, right? So this is like one of the thing, okay? For the meningitis actually. Just a second. Now, the thing I, I wanted to know in case of meningitis is vital stability. Like think about AMC or if you have seen any case, think about vital, what they will give you in the vital. Will they give you a normal child? I mean, with vital or uh, the vital would be or hemodynamic instability. Which one you were expecting in MC clinical? Hemodynamically unstable. Unstable. So, so this is one of the case we have to be ready that you know if the case with meningitis, our case is unstable. Okay, and then you know you will be starting with that thing. You know, uh, I want to take the patient to. Uh, emergency cubicle and they like to start with you know IV fluids and you know and to secure the airway so blah blah those all certain things are here actually so hemorrhagic instability thing is here all right now another thing in meningitis you have to see like now an extra thing I want to clear you what setting you are treating the patient you are at GP setting or at, you know, because I'm telling on the basis of all the cases are you treating the patient in GP setting or are you treating the patient in tertiary setting? If you are tertiary setting. setting. All right. So if you are GP setting, is it necessary that I have to refer separately that, you know, also I'm referring this patient. I mean, you need to give some investigation definitely, but at the same time, you also start antibiotic, which is probably important. And then you are referring the patient to the tertiary level hospital. So this is mandatory actually here. Okay, they want to hear that one that you know you are referring to tertiary if you are at GP level actually. All right, so this is the uh, another point actually often people misses. And in case of meningitis, uh, few of the management thing we are getting in very soon. Uh, but just for additional thing, yes, definitely some of the investigation. So if at GP setting, do I need to give investigation? Do I still can do investigation? As a blood culture and CBC? Uh, I mean, yes. the full blood examination? Yes, definitely. So we can do, actually. And what are the investigation in the tertiary setting? You also have to mention that one. So when you will go to tertiary level hospital, probably the specialist will look after your kid and they will take you special care. And they would also like to do certain other tests. And what are these tests now? Uh, CT scan head CT followed by lumbar puncture yes. examination. Yes, now you're talking. Meningitis cases are present mostly with the headache. 
meningitis cases in in our mc clinical mostly presentative headache so the ct thing is coming obviously ct thing is coming and lumbar puncture is coming here as well okay some people also like to ask the chest x ray have seen okay so these are the extra thing to add in the tertiary level so everyone please clear what is your stand like you know are you at the gp level or are you at the tertiary level you know please this keep this in mind actually especially meningitis cases we have seen the both cases one case it was in tertiary level already it, you just need to tell that okay we'll do this 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 thing but if you're gp level you tell like i would like to do this but i would like to refer you to tertiary level hospital there you know there the specialist doctor they will also see the patient and they might be ordering also ct scan uh, chest x ray and also lumbar puncture this is additional here actually and then the management things came management thing came and also i like to add few thing here is it necessary that those are having meningitis their family need to be treated so as like remember the pertussis cases now think about the meningitis case is it as important yes sir it's Profilaxis. also contagious contagious Profilaxis isn't it guys so prophylactic yes. is important here not mentioning about prophylactic treatment in case of meningitis could be an error here as well so family so add two three more points here i hope so you're writing guys family prophylaxis uh also mentioned about the vaccination whether the other members are vaccinated or not and also uh, do i need to notify still that one neisseria meningitis it's a dangerous you know organism so probably so notifying dhs this is also important okay so i'm, I'm giving short summary here actually how to exclude the cases one by one in this way because all the things are depend on approach so all the thing depends how you proceed so this is important now clear guys and anything you know we'll go in more details we'll do role play so that time i'll give you feedback things would be much more clear now coming to a case i'm sure many of you know about this thing a child presented with rash later turn out to be kawasaki disease what are the positive points anyone can un can unmute and tell let's make the class more engaging high grade fever high grade fever this quantity crash this got anything in the neck uh, strawberry tongue neck uh, strawberry tongue lymph nodes lymph nodes yes. yes fever rash then lymph node now here i like to and also let's set t for tongue okay so this finding we all know maybe one thing some of we don't know fever we know rash we know discomitted we rash no in mcmc we all learn and the tongue strawberry we all know now come to the lymph node we heard about the lymph node now here a uh, little bit specific we need to know actually what type of lymph node are enlarged axillary cervical or inguinal uh, I, i i'm sure all of you know cervical lymph node but what is the size now here it is little additional actually that so specifically and to the examiner if pf is added we have to ask the size just to be sure all right so what is the size here can any anyone tell more than 1.5 usually yes so there is a parameter given it should not be less than 1.5 like this very well done so this is one of the extra finding here actually the lymph node and of course we will be also taking the uh, details history of the rash now i like to add in physical examination in kawasaki cases often you might find pefe i have seen that one so in case of that pefe we are we started with the general examination we started with pickled or pickles whatever you say then we go for the systemic and now add like this so gsl guys please write this one gsl to remember so child with rash cases will remember as gsl what is gsl g for the general examination that is the pickled s for systemic examination if any other system you want to examine a little bit more you will be asking superficially and lastly l for local examination so local rash now this part we like to ask the examiner in details actually to examiners can you tell me about the distribution of the rash okay so what do you want to know so you can specify the thing uh then about the rash is it discomitted that's the most important question is it a discomitted rash or is it hs 
but you know itching thing also you can take the history along with the patient okay but if you forget with that part with patient then you can ask here as well just to be cross check actually so this is some of the additional thing you can involve here another thing which you can add here probably uh, oral cavity actually all right separately so OGSL actually maybe oral cavity the tongue actually so a little bit additional thing in the PEF. I have seen PEF is very, very important in Kawasaki. Remaining thing will be telling in the, in the management thing, but I feel just this part is important. I think for now, anything you want to add with Kawasaki guys? Like, you know, what is making this disease quite unique? Coronary aneurysms? Oh yes, like that is, we, we will be discussing later that as a complication, good point is still though, like, you know, the cause of death and why we are afraid of this Kawasaki disease because it can develop, uh, I think, um, heart disease eventually. And that is the reason we need uh, eco and certain other thing we'll be discussing the, this part actually. So management, we're not getting in immunoglobulin, aspirin, uh, patient often ask about aspirin that you know we heard aspirin has side effects so those particular thing has to be cleared actually in the management but initial part we are discussing that what will make my case uh, looking like cows like in the beginning when i am standing in the doorway so this is the part i was talking about actually so these are the certain thing or in the history or in the beginning that will help me because in first two three minutes if you still are not sure what is your case is you know you are you will be getting in little trouble later okay so this is the thing now another case recent time it was tested it was uh, non-accidental uh, burn injury like you know there was a coffee that is uh, uh, it can happen right with the small kids like you know you are uh, doing something in the uh, in the stove or you know you are uh, making tea or coffee Okay, or you know, you are taking, you know, so now is it in, intentional or accidental? You have to exclude. So that's the thing is coming here that child abuse, you question, you need to ask actually. So this case will be also displaying. Uh, okay, uh, this, uh, just a minute. Okay, so this case will be also displaying, like, you know, it's a new case actually. Previously, it was not in our slide, and we just add the one actually. So how it looks like this is how it looks like actually okay so this one will be adding in the notes a omen or auntie of a baby or child forget the name came to hospital with a complaint of a burn injury to her nephew does take the history and do the proper counseling so you got a feedback from this case with the past but most of the people are you know they were failed in this case it can be a pilot station when you were telling but thing is you know uh, we don't know like whether pilot or not but many of the pilot we have seen initially they were pilot then they become non-pilot station later all right so this station was pass actually like history and uh, uh, counseling so uh, before i uh, get into the previous points like let's just little see this one um, you will find one thing uh, after taking the general history in this case they started uh with a general history taking like you know the whatever the presenting complaint a history of present illness if you can remember history of present illness typical he asked nothing was abnormal like pee and poo is fine his growth is fine his everything was fine actually all right so like later the explanation part i was really was here dr moi one of the doctor in this hospital and i first I'd like to check the vital all right and I asked about the burn in details and when it happened, when the first time, okay, and before the accident, how he was doing before the accident, okay. So when I asked her role player because she called ambulance and uh, first aid according to the instruction. I appreciate her and also reassured the baby is a stable condition now. She says that is she is his auntie. So now the some of the, uh, you know, doubt thing is coming because his auntie, not the mother actually. Asked about the parents, she told that I am something like maybe the, the baby was given to her actually to take care for a while. They were out for work, it was like that. But I call her concern points and things. 
she was with the baby with the coffee cup, which you know was spilled into baby's chest actually, right? It's taking care of the cup actually. So, uh, so the question was asked actually asked about the um, ba typical baby question. I mean the uh, presenting complaint was asked. Then question was bind stops and the family history. All right, especially binds you can also ask here. Uh, lastly, management and counseling, uh, like, you know, as a role, you know, as a examinee, you'll tell, like, you know, I told her to monitor the baby stable for right now. I think I need to admit the kid. So this is one of the important points, like admission, actually. All right. So here you see this one. And I will list my seniors and told a bit at the management of the part. All right. So what does it mean? It means if you see, so this part, he thought about maybe he did some mistake actually, but if you see the score, his global scoring was good actually. And also sometimes they also see what is the other candidates are doing. Okay. So comparatively all this thing, you know, he, passed actually this case actually but you see the last part you know patient education lastly patient education probably it was not that satisfactory so he has a doubt that you know uh, all this is stable now but uh, still he said admit the kid so which was probably not necessary or he could have told in that way uh, in this way that you know okay like you know after initially like you know treating the baby and keeping here for an hour you know the way we can go to home actually so it's not necessary to stay in the hospital you can also think tell things in that way when you are hospitalizing means you are hospitalizing almost like for 24 hours unless you mention that one for how long you want to keep the baby here all right so this could be one of the mistake here actually and this part maybe i will try to modify a little bit for you actually by studying this case i would like to little bit modify this counseling part in coming days and um, next time, you know, you also need to uh, guide that uh, role player that, you know, has to be careful in handling the kid, especially hot drinks. Okay, so these are the parts right there, actually. Okay, so this is, uh, what do you see? Like, you know, another thing, uh, even if you see the scores were, these four were how, out of how many? Do you know anyone? He got four out of what? Seven. Yes. So you got four out of this right? seven thing actually. So thing is here. Uh, still, in every part, if you see, there can be additional mark can be taken. Right. So these are the cases which we can work together actually to. So this type of like guys, so I was telling in the messenger, you know, do, do not bring unnecessary things actually. Uh, see, uh, uh, Dr. Daniel is here, Dr. Riddha Sar is a general thing you can ask there. Otherwise you can ask in our groups actually. Group mean Facebook group. Messenger one is, you know, sometimes it's easy when I just upload the Zoom link or those link. Or if a case like this, if I just post or someone just post, those things you can discuss, but not like, you know, when is class or like those things you should ask your friend actually, okay? So just to be clear, actually, and uh, my messenger is like it's stroming all, all the time. So if you just, so it, it has to be a healthy thing, actually, not like unnecessary things you ask me you know, in this group. Yeah, but uh, definitely you can ask, you can also call me uh, if there is certain thing. I'm good with calling rather than messages. Please don't mind, actually, and we all are affected with COVID, actually. Yes, and as you can see, guys, like in this part, maybe we can update more, especially education. So this part, I like to add a little bit more point in coming days. So I'll rethink in this part and I'll update a few things. Still, even though it's a past case, but still I think some point can be added actually. All right. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes, doctor. Uh, sir, one domain is like uh, how many total marks? Like four, four, three, three mentioned over here. So out so of when... seven, they count actually. Out of seven, out of they seven. count like... Yeah, so they usually, you know, like 
uh, each areas each areas there are marks actually okay so you have to at least have to get like four 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 you have to get like this okay yeah so this is one of the each, each of this thing you have to and another thing like you know this guy like normally is not supposed to pass because he got you see he got, he got three here actually he was not supposed to pass now this is the part called global scoring he didn't made any major critical error and maybe his overall flow sometime you know how you are talking your tone everything was very good actually so on the basis of everything and also what other uh, candidates are getting on this station is everyone score is a bit less in this case then there is chance of pass i think all together he passed actually yes if everything is four 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 you would have been passed easily but uh, still three he passed i think because of the global scoring global scoring means overall globally he was good actually right so this is how it should be approached so that's why we are telling the flow should be very nice all right so this is a very new case guys like this one is a very new case actually okay and this type of case often there is confusion and things all right so i will update the case for you a little bit more and we'll try to re-upload this case okay just remind me that also like dr daniel dr Intasar, dr Vaishi, like you know you guys anyone like can remind me later dr uh, please update that case a little bit for us more actually so i'll try to see the rch and different guidelines and try to update a little bit more this case actually so far since this was passed it's okay you can read this one at least all right coming back to our previous one so get, you get a little idea guys can can you respond in the box can you get a little idea here okay one more thing i was thinking he can increase the mark by asking some of the more question related to child abuse one thing because it's a non-accidental injury like say example uh, how we approach to our kids i mean the asian countries and some of the other countries but not everywhere is the same actually okay like handling the kids actually so sometime maybe auntie with the kids and get angry and you know just put the you know and uh, so it can be possible you need to exclude that part actually in the history All right so this is one of the part exclude abuse All right. because the headline if you see non-accidental barn injury so this is the extra thing to get extra mark actually another extra area to increase the mark is the patient education that one we can see a lot of journal a lot of other areas definitely we can increase the mark in the education yes all right uh, next one that is coming is scarlet fever guys like you know imagine we are in the doorway uh, i mean standing in the doorway you have two minutes and what are the points um if you find in the history and the physical examination history and physical examination by the way also given sometime in the doorway like the key points what are the key points that will help you thinking this is scarlet fever tell me two chief complaint first of all two of them is chief complaint now scarlet fever what age group it is expected i repeat again scarlet fever what age group you are expecting less than four or more than four can we check in the rcs guideline guys this is also interesting more than four sir five yeah more than five yeah yeah more than five or more than four yes yeah and what organism is more common here group b or group a Is it group B? I repeat again, group B or group A, please check. It is group A. Group A, beta, hemolytic, streptococcus. Now, many people make a mistake here. All right? Because, you know, when you tell the cause, you have to tell, like, you know, when you were explaining, you know, your kid, I think, is having scarlet fever, and it is because of a bug, which we called in medically, you know, group A, beta, hemolytic, streptococcus, which often presented with you know, redness on the tongue. You know, then you, you start and start explaining things actually. Okay. So group A, don't make the mistake because if you say group B now, there will be direct cutting of your marks and could be an error even. All right. So scarlet fever caused by group A. Group A means what? 
स्टेफ और स्ट्रेप करेक्ट So, uh, how about sore throat? Present. Yes, sir. Present. Yes. So fever and the sore throat, two of the very important thing. And in the oral cavity finding, oral cavity finding. Ah, uh, strawberry find tongue. Tongue. Okay. So red tongue or strawberry tongue. Now, anything else extra? Anything else? Just extra that. Ah, uh, circum oral pallor. Ah, uh, you know, the oral cavity. You know, there is a certain thing about the scarlet fever. Initially, it turned into a different color. Then, after seven days, it turned into different color. So, about the oral cavity, there are certain finding which we will disclose very shortly. Okay, because while explaining, we will we have to tell the patient's mother in that way. Okay, that you know, initially this color, then the thing is inflamed and you know after the the papilla and things so there's a covering you will find okay so there's some finding we have to tell in that way so there's the oral cavity any other thing by the apart from that now uh is it possible because of scarlet fever okay no no anyone is mentioning the main point in case of scarlet fever yeah okay like someone is saying sandpaper rash okay So this is again coming with the rash thing. Okay, sandpaper rash. Okay, agreed. Uh, very very important thing to add here: scarlet fever can lead to some kind of airway obstruction. This is one of the thing they want to see. Is it possible with the scarlet fever that it can lead to some kind of upper airway <laughs> obstruction? <laughs> Someone's microphone is on, I guess. Let me see. Okay, turn it off. No worries. All right. Okay, someone's microphone was one. It's okay. Um, as you see, guys, uh, I was talking about scarlet fever. All right. Sign of obstruction. Can we? Can anyone check in the RCH? Is there anything mentioned about the obstruction? now otitis media we are coming uh, we have to ask this history this is a common question like you know dr intas is asking like say we take a history of meningococcus negative history call it we take a history of otitis media in anything discharge from the air so these are common history but yes like if you check in the rca they mention in the beginning what we need to exclude and this is a common mistake many people did not asking about the airway or you know upper airway obstruction upper airway obstruction so not taking history of this part or not asking about the vitals or is there any upper airway obstruction if you don't tell that part now there will be cutting off mark if you tell this part there will be adding off mark actually so you see people are passing with 7 out of 4 people are also passing 6 uh, sorry 6 uh, out of 7 actually so you can get 4 you can get also 6 so you target the higher actually now one of the mistake you know if you see in the last part like you know 4 4 4 3 some people do one like this 6 6 5 0 is it possible 6 6 5 2 too good how this is possible this is scoring sir a uh, critical it? error in one of the tasks maybe uh not really that one Uh, even if it's critical error there could be some marks actually okay the person was too busy with history too busy with history 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 physical examination couldn't get up to management this is another very very common error guys it it happened with many of you so guys please remember that one you have to finish the management actually in any way whatever you tell little bit small more you have to tell the management okay so this is please keep it in mind actually all right so 6650 it is like that 
Okay, scarlet fever coming back, fever, sore throat, that's the common thing. On um, oral cavity checking, there would be the strawberry tongue, which we discussed. Uh, some of the rash you said, like, you know, sand, paper rash, this one. And very, very importantly, upper airway obstruction. Okay, in the management, definitely we discussed there will be antibiotic, there will be steroid, there will be hydration thing. All right. All right, so these will be also need to remember. So we'll go there. Don't worry about the management thing. Uh, lastly, there is a case we call it sick kid. Now, sick kid is somewhere, it's uh, septicemia or meningitis, all are kind of sick kid. Like, just imagine how's the outdoors are. A mother or father is coming with a kid, and they're telling my kid is very sick. Now, the thing will be, you have to take history and figure it out what is going on. And they might be asking you to give a nice management. So guys, this is one of the very popular case, septicemia management. Septicemia management. So before I get into that one, let me show you how the septicemia management is given. Maybe I can upload that one for you guys after class. Where is that? Sepsis management. It's a very large one. Have you heard about this type of case, guys? Uh, septicemia workup. Those of you who are a little bit experienced in MC clinical, heard about this thing? Septicemia workup often people are telling in the groups and thing. So this is that septicemia workup. You understand? This is that septicemia workup they were talking about. So this is quite a long, but every point has, everything has certain points. But you don't have to worry that much. The beginning one is more important for you. I'll tell you first, actually, like see septicemia workup. Septicemia workup, most cases it is given along with meningococcus septicemia. Okay, so in that case, the meningococcus, antibiotic, you send certain investigation thing, those are included here, right? Then how to do like, you know, obviously when we start your, our case, we can definitely start asking, is my patient is hemodynamic is stable or not? So most cases, if it's a septicemia or meningococcal septicemia, they will tell, uh, no, like, you know, blood pressure is this, pulse is this, you will find the blood pressure 90 by 60, you will think, yes. Yeah, yeah, I will post this one. Surely I'll post, definitely I'll post this one in the group. Okay, so, um, when you start in the beginning, we start asking with, uh, is my patient stable or not? So uh, then you have to ask the examiner. Uh, examiner will tell you, okay, what do you want to know? And then you specifically ask about pulse, blood pressure, temperature, respiratory rate. You will find all are not stable, unstable case. Now we have to tell like, you know, I have to take the patient to emergency cubicle, I have to start IV flu. Now, these are the part that is coming. These are the part now that is coming. So immediate action. I like to call some of my senior. Uh, in the uh, meanwhile, I like to monitor the patient. I have to clear the airway. Uh, if everything is compromised, I like to start. Like now you tell all those things, oxygen, and especially IV fluid, so mainly ABC. If you say ABC, that's perfect actually. Now some people confuse that one, okay, what word I have to tell. If you just tell ABC in any way, it's totally fine. And in the beginning, just use that word, emergency cubicle, and more than enough. Okay, some people make it, it as a kitchen, they make it so complicated. I have to tell in that way, otherwise, well, no, don't want it. Mentioned about emergency cubicle, mentioned about ABC, don't forget to mention about starting IV things actually. All right. And imagine with meningococcus. Now those are from my AMC MCQ. They know that how I used to tell the meningitis management uh, with rash or without rash. Now with rash, uh, what do I suspect? Without rash, what do I suspect? Does anyone remember that one? 
sir, with rash, it is Neisseria meningitis, and in that case, we are supposed to administer antibiotics uh, prior to the blood culture. Because we don't have time, actually. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So and in start, the other so case, other case was the typical meningitis. Yes. yes. So in this case, uh, since this is associated with rash, what should be our protocol of line of management? So in the beginning. In the beginning, sir, we are supposed to administer antibiotic. Then we are supposed administer. to go for a, uh, blood culture. Yes, because in the in the RCS guideline, I also check that you can't lose time. There's a clear line written. If antibiotic is necessary, it's start the antibiotic. They also write this line. But this is the, since this is the management part, they have to write in in that way. But in the other place, they have mentioned if antibiotic is necessary, you start the antibiotic actually without wasting time. Do not waste time in investigation. So. I would like to add the antibiotic since this is the case with the rash one. So that depending now, like even a normal meningitis, it, it can be associated with a lot of other problems, right? But this in this one, I will like to mention here the antibiotic. Then I have to get into this one. I also like to tell, I'd like to also do some of the investigation, like in you know, a blood culture, CBC, C-reactive protein, liver function test, coagulation profile. Why coagulation profile here, guys? To rule out uh, DIC. DIC, yes. To rule out DIC. And how would be the platelet in these cases? Low platelet count. Thrombocytopenia. Yes. yes. It is important to ask the platelet. Why? To differentiate with? Uh, liver disease and... Uh... Mm, liver, okay. And there's another one, child with rash. We have to consider that one too. HSP? HSP, yes, good one. ITP. ITP. Yeah. ITP as well, yes. Well done. Some cases, hemophilia, in fact, as well. So, a lot of things are coming, actually, you know, because so that's why specifically the blood card. Sometimes we ask, like, do I have any blood card or something like that? So, in that case, you know, what do you want to know? So, they also tell you some of the interpretation in that case. All right. Well done, guys. So this is in first 15 minutes. This is the one that is actually you are looking for. Now, they also mentioned about first 30 minutes because mentioning about giving IV fluid. Okay. So this is add or increase the fluid, actually. Bolas as a push, then reassess. 0.9% still. And in first one hour, you see now you see this one. One thing they have mentioned that if you have to increase the fluid, IV fluid resuscitation. Now, this is part might not be required in the main exam. But if if you don't know, like if the, your patient is not resuscitating, if they start from that part, in that case, you have to give inotropes. Okay. And adrenaline. There was a I think recent case or something like that. There was some confusion whether to give adrenaline whether not to give adrenaline, there was something came. Now this is the indication, especially the septicemic workup case or advanced case. If circuitry failure, even after 40 ml Parkage resuscitation, then you should start the adrenaline. Now everyone is clear to give, when to give adrenaline in case of septicemia. So this is the part many were confusing in the group. Everyone clear this one, like when to give adrenaline in the septicemic cases, when circulatory failure after 40 ml. So when our fluid resuscitation is failing, even after 40 ml per kg, then we have to give adrenaline. So you can add this line in your case to make your case even more stronger. Okay. Now, Sandra Pras, doctor, do I need to tell adrenaline point two zero two? Like, not that necessary in that case, All right? more things are there, especially about antibiotic and certain other thing. Uh, one line that to me is a little bit different, consider adding acyclovir if HSV suspected. Now, this is one of the thing, herpes meningitis, herpes encephalitis. Is it possible with a patient with you know drowsiness and this kind of case? Is it possible? Yes, sir, it is. Possible. 
herpes encephalitis there was a case we learned i think in mcmcq so that one we also need to keep it in mind actually yes so these are the some of the additional points that is given here okay so this confusion clear guys like you know i mean the uh, confusion that is happening in mc clinical exclusive on different groups that you know what is the indication of adrenaline in the septicemia when to give when not to give this is the part actually anyone like to add anything i mean maybe you have done some research on that one uh, dr daniel dr natasha anyone anything you guys want to add like maybe you have some observation also uh, anyone are okay with that uh, all clear very good okay all clear okay like but add yeah because everyone could have some their own observation actually in the groups maybe uh, i might be missing that one so always do add in the class actually I'll, i'm i'm sporting about that part actually yes it's, it's all about teamwork guys actually so this is the part about the adrenal i'm telling it again and again because i saw there was confusion all right so very sick kid or septicemia right so these are the cases and apart from that you also probably 2000 some of the 18 cases eczema uh then i can add seborrheic now seborrheic it is also typical how a rash history should be taken it should be also taken in that way but there would be some of the allergic history so eczema and the seborrheic i'll be little bit doing more in the allergic part as well don't worry about that one because we have a also slide with allergy in the next day so eczema and seborrheic i'd like to keep that one in that part all right so family history allergic history these are quite common in case of seborrheic dermatitis let's see you know who can impress me there is a special word we ask actually especially in in terms of the distribution of the rash or the type of rash there is a special type of word we use for the seborrheic dermatitis few things are Hello. yes 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 doctor Hello. yes weeping lesion weeping lesion behind the ear dr wafi already i can see has written that one weeping lesion behind the ear so this is a key word for seborrheic rest of the thing are similar family history allergic history okay is the other how about the other siblings in the family does they have any other things like that those are common thing actually but weeping lesion behind the ear so you can ask that one directly to the examiner actually so this is a key thing here all right now let's go for today's first role play uh, any questions before we get into that one uh, i'll be showing few things uh, i'll be showing few things uh, as well like you know how to take some of the history thing now like, this one is a very nice one especially like you know we always start our cases like this what brings you today in this clinic then we take the general history and if it is more confined to the rash uh, if you have to ask more thing about rash this is the rash question like a mnemonic discharge if there is a rash you have to ask if there is a discharge you definitely need to ask about that one so distribution example if we imagine hsp you know like to butter okay itchy or not you know you not like eczema allos itchy spreading uh spreading from like you know like to butter or sometimes spreading also means i think uh, central to peripheral or peripheral to central now example if i tell about a case of mums mums case is it uh peripheral to central or central to peripheral what do you think mums that started or measles so you can say measles at least measles you can should have answer uh back of the ear it started okay i think i need a little guide you guys uh, let some people forget about the rash one there was a nice slide if you remember guys
So my dear Dr. Forcourt, I guess the rash one. Okay, this one I'll also upload, okay? Or someone take a snap or can upload as well in our group. So if you see this one very carefully, first check the disease. Do not go here, you'll be lost. First check the disease. Uh, is it important for us? Scarlet, yes, caused by biogen. Main complaints, fever, sore throat. There is a rash also in the body. So initially it's in the trunk, then to the extremity. That means it is center, then to periphery. So while asking the question, the rash, I mean, history of rash, like, can you tell me about the rash? You know, is it from, now you can give them some lead question. Is it from the body first or is it in the other part in like first? Something you can give the lead question to them like this. Yes. So some people like rash. Now, if you see, these are not that important. Uh, yes, meningococcium, yeah. Is it important for us, meningococcium, yes. Neisseria meningitis. So petechi, purpuric, this kind of rash, generalized all over. Suddenly the DIC type of thing started to develop. You can't really differentiate. Okay, now measles it started in the head, back of the ear. So that means it's yes. So head, then to the entire body. All right. So these are certain points, especially you know we were discussing about the rash actually, how spreading of rash can be even important for you. All right. So we get to know a few points today than the character of rash. Uh, example, Kawasaki, what is the character of rash? I hope everyone knows. It is? Discriminating. Uh, everyone is correct, it's discriminating. Uh, example, is there any similar rash before? What does it indicate? Which disease it is indicating? That means suffered before. So going with eczema, going with seborrheic, isn't it? Like history of similar rash before when this question is asked. Associated feature like fever, okay, this is a common question, okay. Uh, redness. Now, sometimes we ask, this is important, you know, how you can increase the mark in the exam. Have you applied anything? Like if there is a rash, now this is a key question to increase the bonus mark. When you ask this kind of thing, uh, did you apply something in the lesion? Did you give some gel? Did you give some, apply some cream in the lesion? And what's the result of that one? Okay, so this history is important. Same like fever, have you apply, give any kind of panoply? All right. Or anything, do you think that is exacerbating the condition? Example, stress can exacerbate the condition in case of in which case, stress can exacerbate eczema, possible, yes. Uh, recent viral infection can exacerbate. Okay, someone said IBS. Okay, now we are a child with rash, so IBS for, for a moment we can forget. Uh, someone said herpes, I will take that one. IBS maybe for GIT, I will take. Okay. Recent viral infection. If someone is suffering with recent viral infection, which one we should keep it in mind? I think today we just learned. I think we can go with the HSP. Now we have to think in the um, in point of view of AMC now a little bit. Uh, yeah. HSP, dengue, it's very less likely. Dengue, they will tell you in case of someone came from Dhaka, someone came from India, okay? Dengue is not common in Australia, first of all. So in case of this one, like, you know, there is a recent history of viral infection. We should think about the HSP. You can also think about meningococcemia in some cases as well. Some cases of limping child, okay? Even though that's out of box, limping child, yes. Remember anyone, which limping child, if I just tell, if I just extend a little bit, limping kid, in which limping condition associated with history of viral infection? Peptic arthritis. 
accept it. Transient. Yeah, yeah, transient. 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 More, yes, more this one we like to go with transient, yes. Perceptives, for this. But transient more because it's a vital. We're talking about the vital. So transient, I think. All right. So guys, so you understand this mnemonic? Everyone, if you said yes, clear, then we'll, you know, so please, please, you know, and you know, I, I will upload something for you. Like, you know, sometime mm, this kind of a small thing, try to make notes, you know, these are the thing that is, example, available in Australia. Uh, everywhere it's available, I'll show you. Let me put that one in our group. Where is it? Just give me a second, guys. Okay, sorry for like there's some call coming from country. Yes. Yes, I was about to upload the picture. Uh, this kind of uh, thing, if you can do and sometimes send me, I can quickly cross check and um, give you some kind of overview. Just a second. Okay. So can you please check? I uploaded in our Facebook group, not Messenger, but I'm also loading in Messenger group. If you just check, now many of the uh, tutor, many uh, will tell you uh, uh, making things like that. This is this one. You know, I want all cases. So next time, you know, these are the things uh, available in Australia office work. In Bangladesh, you know, it's also available in Faith, Pakistan, India, these are also available. So, you know, you highlight the key points. Otherwise, believe me, it's very tough to you know remember things actually, and these are the things you need to practice with your friends. Okay, so just see you know some of the just of the key points I highlighted so that I can remember. People get failed because they forget points actually. I hope so. Everyone has seen. I uploaded in the messenger. Please check it one time. I'm giving you time. Yes, before I bring my role play things. And guys, please let me know. Uh, if anyone wants to pray, I, I will definitely give you a break actually because we have done with the study thing here. So if anyone who wants to pray, just let me know. You know, when. Like uh, now or after do at least one role play, we can go for the break. We can go do one role play, okay, guys? Let's do one role play, then go for the break, actually. All right? At least do one. Let's. Uh... Okay, so uh, the first one, who wants to do the first role play? Who wants to do the first role play? Name, please. Anyone? Most welcome. Okay, let's see from the names. Anyone? Doc Dr. Aisha Imdad, you want to do? Dr. Gulzar indeed already, your partner did already. Uh, Dr. David, <laughs> uh, today or next day, let me know. How about Dr. Haya, like studying regularly, Dr. Haya now? Oh, yes, okay. Uh, hello. Okay. So I'm okay. studying, actually I have this sort sort today, so that is a bit difficult for me to do okay. the 
Oh, you're having sore throat. Okay, okay. Oh, sore throat. Okay, in this situation, <laughs> yeah. okay. I hope so. I hope so. You are okay. Yeah. Today it was scary. You know, like just I will uh, get up in the morning. Or one of my student message. You no, know, I'm also related to all of you somehow. So now message came in that way. Doctor, I mean, very bad situation. Isn't you know, what happened? And I uploaded that one. You were saying that you know my uh, like you know Kala, you all understand. I think like her Kala Kalu. I mean, auntie. I mean, both of them are doctors. They are affected. Uh, his uncle is affected. I think the houses are nearby. Now her mother is also having sore throat, and she is telling that she is symptomatic. And few days back, she was having uh, some exposure with the corona patient. Actually, now she is also like uh, quite stressed. I don't know. Okay, hold on. Uh, go and plus check. Like you know whether you have corona or not actually yes so a lot of thing is going on and uh, stay safe guys like it's very important in our country especially in Bangladesh things are uh, now getting getting bad now and very very bad thing happening because uh, you know the PP that is given by the government there's a lot of you know uh, uh, not real PPI I think you know it's not of good quality. Some people are even in this situation. They're making business actually, which is really really sad. And uh, it's like you know they are suddenly getting exposed with this kind of PPI to. Uh, and you know sometimes they are given PPI. One PPI is given by the government, but you can understand when you were at the one doing a shift, you have to see four or five patients probably. You have to receive four or five patients. Now with the same PP, like you know uh, the whole day, it's very tough. To wear and sit. Normally, the rule is, you know, if you're wearing a PPE, uh, when you, you know, open it, like you should discard it. Actually, that's the like normal thing. But uh, things are not going really. In Australia, things are like uh, one PP for one patient is like that here. But anyways, guys. So anyone who wants to come for role play, why is Dr. Intesar like you know? Okay. Is your microphone is okay now? Want to try? <laughs> okay. Uh, if uh, anyone, anyone can try. Dr. Reshma, Dr. Sutapa, I can see. Yes, yes, definitely. This, this is the like we are expecting. Yes, Dr. Farwa is trying today. I, I hope Dr. Kaihan will try next day as well. Hello, yes. sir. Yes, hello. Okay. So I think, um, how about your partners? I think. Thank you. Welcome back. And, uh, sir. Uh, <laughs> yes. And yeah. you know, I, I would also like to, uh, you know, give you floor later at the end of class. Maybe you can tell people a few things about PT. And we have, I think, another doctor here who also passed PT. I think, uh, is it doctor? I think. Is it Dr. Sutapa? I think she also passed PT. Is it? Sir, Dr. Nova also has passed oh, the exam. Nova. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, you know, maybe you guys can uh, like, you know, uh, tell a little bit about the PT preparation. And I saw very good marks actually. So, if PT, you can get very good marks, no need to go for sometimes OAT and this kind of thing. All right. Yes, sir, for so, sure. I think, yes. So, later I'll give you a floor on that one. And now, uh, ready for the case? Yes, sir. Partially. <laughs> I just okay. wanted to try. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now trying is like the main thing here. Okay. Okay. Your time starts now.
All right, doctor. Uh, uh, how are you? Uh, hi, I'm good. How are you? Okay, so uh, can I check your ID, please? Yes, sir, please. Okay, so uh, this is your patient. Do you understand your case? Yep. All right, so you can continue now. Here's the patient's father is waiting for you. So thank you so much. Hi, my name is Parva Zehra. I'm one of the junior doctors of this hospital. Uh, from oh. the notes, uh, I knew no, your name is John. Uh, how mm -hmm. may I address you, John? No, you can call me John, it's fine, yes. Okay, nice. And uh, what's your child's name? Uh, name is Paul, actually. Thank you so much for asking. Okay, uh, nice name. Um, John, may I have a word with my examiner? Then I'll get back to you shortly. Yes. Dear examiner, I wanted to know uh, that if my patient is vitally stable or not. Uh, your patient is vitally stable for now, yes. Okay, thank you. I'll get back to my patient again. Yes. Uh, so John, uh, what brings uh, you here today to this clinic? Um, as you already see from the notes, like my uh, kid is sick and he's having some rash and uh, certain areas that has been affected. So we are quite scared. Um, yeah. So that is the reason, you know, we uh, brought actually Paul very quickly to the clinic. And uh, he suffered like a few days back, as you can see from the notes, like um, after he suffered from viral infection, then... Um, Suddenly, the rush thing came up, actually, yes. Yeah, firstly, uh, John, uh, I would like you to know uh, that uh, you don't need to worry about it. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, dear John, I'm afraid that uh, your child has a condition called uh, HSP, also known as mm -hmm. Hinoch Online Purpura. Uh, right. with what, what's that, actually? It is basically the inflammation of small vessels of his body. Uh, okay. Are you following me? Yes. Okay. Uh, you don't need to worry about it much as it's a common condition, which usually mm -hmm. occurs in children aged from two to eight years. Mm -hmm. It's quite common uh, in children with his age group. Is that and a serious condition? It can be serious when it is not treated, okay. but since you are here, uh, you are in safe hands. Okay, great. Yeah, and uh, the pattern uh, your son uh, is showing is consistent with your uh, with the HSP's characteristics. Mm -hmm. All right. And yeah, and as your son uh, had uh, had an upper respiratory tract infection prior yeah. to this condition, it's mm -hmm. exactly what HSP shows. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I hope you are catching up with me. Yes. Great. Yeah. So what I uh, uh, wanted to do is admit your child to the hospital so that, that uh, he could be assured, uh, he, he could be assured the best of care. And uh, we would refer him to a pediatric registrar to run some investigations like uh, a urine microscopy and culture, uh, mm -hmm. full, full blood examination, urea and electrolytes. And uh, okay some of his bleeding time and clotting time as well. All um, right. Yeah, the, um, basically uh, HSP does not have any specific kind of management. Uh, mostly uh, it does have a very symptomatic kind of management. So uh, okay. uh, we will be administering him uh, uh, in, uh, NSAIDs for his pain and short okay. uh, course of steroids. The reason we are admitting him is to exclude all the serious conditions. Okay. Like intersusception, uh, okay. as he's having his abdominal pain as well. So you never know that what comes next. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And um, right. do you have any concerns till now? Uh, I was thinking that, you know, uh, uh, see, Paul usually uh, just entered into the school, so I was thinking, like, you know, uh, how long he'll be staying here, actually. Uh, he, uh, Paul, um, generally, it takes four weeks, a course of four weeks, without any complications. But uh, at this moment, we cannot say anything. It depends upon his investigations. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. And... Um, uh, Yep. Yep. 
I guess, sir, I'm done for now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now yeah. you can include the four R. You know, whenever you forget things, yes, uh, remember you can always include the four R. Okay. This is uh, some of the tricks. You can't yes, uh, really suddenly you know stop. Uh, yeah. Yes, so sir. you had some time. You were doing things, and as a first attempt, things were fine. Actually, I would say. Yes, yeah. sir. So, but you know, you stopped early actually. But you know, initially that you know two minutes. So you have still two minutes left. So that means you know you can uh, explore more things actually here. Now, yes, sir. I wanted things, to ask. I wanted to ask yes. about so many things, but there is a lot of yes. distraction at home. Okay. So. Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can see. You know, baby is also. I think. Yeah. Some, some, <laughs> yeah, you can see. No, it's the well done. Yeah. 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 Uh, one thing that is important, you know, we we have to. Uh, uh tell a little bit more details about the follow up things uh, yes, especially uh, coming back of this thing their treatments supportive mm -hmm. care talking uh, i think uh, uh some of the management plan you need to tell and if you see one more thing examiner will give you you know specific ones like you know it means mm -hmm. when you tell me the you know investigation you mm -hmm. also need to ask the examiner do you examiner is there any uh, office test or is there any blood curd is available for me actually. Okay. That means what? Like, you know, remember I told two things, you know, in the beginning of the HSP, like one of them was the CBC, that's the platelet information. I think yes, the examiner was having. The platelet count yes, was normal. And another one is that one is the urine thing, you know, the urine finding showing the proteinuria and the RBC, RBC central important findings. So these two things was with me actually. Forward to yes, <laughs> yes, ask sir. that one because it, it, it was given here actually, and I think in the beginning you start uh, you forget. I think that uh, th that history you asked intentionally, or uh, this does not include history. You know, uh, did you understand in the beginning? Uh, yes, sir, I did. Okay. Or you did okay, so that's an understanding yes. case also carries mark actually it is important. Okay, yes, so sir. since this is the important case, I would also like to give a chance to my another doctor like you know who wants to do the same case a little bit, maybe a role play we can try, because you know as I mentioned last the second innings is always easier, going, so anyone wants to try Doctor Clarine anyone, Doctor Chamini you want to try this one. Uh, okay. Okay. If if there are no other, I can go with Dr. Daniel in that case. If there are no other from new doctors, I can go with Dr. Daniel in that case. All right. So Dr. Daniel, uh, yeah, we can start actually. Yes. Great. <laughs> How are you? All right. Good, thank you, Doctor. <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, I also have to tell you, how are you? May I check your ID as well? <laughs> Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm ready. I guess I'm ready. Okay. Ready. All right. Let's start the timer. Okay. So, hi, doctor. How are you? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for asking me. Uh, I'm one of the junior doctor here, and I will oh, right. be take care about the patient. Yes, this is my ID. All right. Great. Yes. So, do you understand okay, your case? Uh, yes. Thank you. Yeah. So, this is your patient John. He's waiting. And here's some inquiries about his kid. So you can start your case, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, <clears throat> hello, John, my name is Daniel. I'm one of the junior doctor here. I will be taking care about you. And mm -hmm. uh, I can see from the note that uh, you are worried about your son. Uh, what is his name? Oh, his name is Paul. Paul, okay, okay, nice to meet you. Thank you for <clears throat> coming to me and uh, I can see from the note uh, that you have noticed that uh, some uh, rash uh, over the button, uh, buttock and uh, on the other part of the body. And uh, please uh, <clears throat> be aware that uh, it is very good that you come on this stage because uh, this condition is uh, called uh, HC HSP. It is uh, okay. Hinoch uh, Scholen Purpura. It is quite All a strange right. name. What's but that uh, anyway, yes, it uh, have you heard? You don't know about it. It is no. inflammation of small blood vessels of the body. Uh, for oh. example, uh, small vessels is located on the skin, uh, also located in the kidney, intestine, and uh, very rare it can be in the lung or also oh. on the brain. <clears throat> yes. Okay. 
That's why uh, this cause of this condition is uh, usually unknown, but it is common condition. However, it is usually it is autoimmune disease also, usually can be triggered. For example, in your case, uh, because your son had a viral infection mm -hmm. 10 days ago, it is normal that the yeah. virus uh, can push this uh, process of inflammation of this uh, small vessels. That's why uh, the rash is appears. Are you getting the call? So you are saying this uh, virus is causing this thing to happen? It was like a trig trigger. It was like a okay. I got first, it. first step of mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, normally the body produce uh, so, uh, some uh, uh, some chemical substances, uh, for example, antibodies uh, to fight infection. Mm -hmm. And uh, in case of HSP, this antibody attacks own body vessels. And uh, mm -hmm. there is uh, also in, especially small vessels. All and right. uh, most likely this condition uh, <clears throat> appears like in your case, uh, rash. Also, it can be joint pain, limping, and also tummy pain. Okay. And uh, it is very important. Is that a uh, uh, about... serious condition, doctor? Like, I mean, is there like life threatening for my kid? Yes, it can be life threatening. Why? Because what I said before, it can be um, affected small vessels in uh, kidney. Okay. Oh, yes, right. and uh, that's why uh, that uh, kidney of uh, your son can be affected, and your son can lose a protein or other uh, blood cells. That's why we need to uh, take care about this his kidney and to uh, check. The, how is kidney working? It is very important. Also, it can be some um, abdominal pain. Why? Because it can be some folding or some uh, intersusception also can be obstruction even. And also in very rare case, it can be some brain damage, but uh, do not worry. Uh, at mm -hmm. this stage, you are in a uh, um, safe hand and we will take care about your son, but uh, we, I'm going to admit your son uh, okay. to uh, check to check how this whole system is, is working especially i'm going to look uh, urinalysis it is how is uh, kidney working and uh, protein and blood in urine uh, full blood count also coagulation profile while it is important because sometimes uh, we need to rule out other serious diseases all right. uh, but uh, also we can look what uh, is any blood in the stool and uh, also it is very important that's why i'm going to refer him to ultrasound investigation and mm -hmm. uh, also um, when the, all this uh, analysis uh, went back it uh, that uh, we will decide is uh, your son uh, need to stay at hospital or you can go home after all, right. all the examination mm -hmm. will be done also <clears throat> we need to count uh, platelets it is uh, some uh, blood cells which is uh, related about coagulation it means if you cut your finger uh, that uh, blood stops because of this platelet are you getting right. me so far yes yes yeah great okay and uh, very important to uh, know the some red flags mm -hmm. uh, if you uh, after when all investigation was done it is very important to prevent uh, this condition and uh, that's why we need to uh, make uh, all this analysis done Mm -hmm. And uh, if in future your son will have some tummy pain or the same condition, you need to immediately come to the hospital. Uh, I have a and, doubt, doctor. Uh, can I ask that one? Yes. yes yeah, yeah. Can it be like, you know, coming back again or it's just you're treating this and, you know, it will be cured for a lifetime? No, no, no. Uh, unfortunately, there is no vaccine or there is no any drugs which can uh, treat uh, this condition forever. That's why, um, because it is like, uh, uh, what, how to say, it is like inflammation of small vessels, uh, and next uh, viral infection uh, also can um, affect oh. this again. So it yes. can, so like why, slight chance it can come back, okay. Yes, yes. Right. That's why, that's why uh, you need to uh, take care about uh, your son uh, to prevent uh, uh, all infection in the future mm -hmm. and uh, but uh, <clears throat> let me assure you that after all, all analysis will be done we need to look uh, precisely what the um, inflammation is the kidney affected on all and that's why if it is only skin 
uh, appearance. It will not right. uh, see. Yeah, that's why uh, do not worry. And uh, in this uh, place, in the hospital, your son will uh, receive uh, all um, in all drugs uh, related to pain or. Uh, but there is no some specific drugs. But anyway, oh, right. uh, all investigation will be done. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. Thank you, doctor. All right. So I think, uh, yep, it's things are also in time. Mm, that's well done. Yes. So Dr. Daniel is uh, becoming more expert nowadays. Uh, okay, let's see the case actually. I think uh, Dr. Daniel, I think I covered the most thing. Just I want to check Dr. Daniel, if you just check your investigation, mm, okay. you told about CBC. You told about C C reactive, I guess. Uh, you told about urine dipstick as well, right? Uh, no, no. Ah, yes, not urine dipstick. But I said we need to uh, look uh, is the protein and or blood in the urine. Oh, but I guess it is the same. Maybe. Okay. Yes. Like then it will be covering actually. Yeah. Maybe I missed that one. You know, he, you know while hearing. Um, did you mention about the ultrasound as well? Yes, yes, to look at okay. uh, oh, Yes, structure. yeah, okay. So guys, you know, I'm, I want to ask and also Dr. Daniel, what was the importance of doing the ultrasound here? The tummy pain to rule out anything or uh, some other thing can be possible here as well? Maybe kidney or I'm not sure. But, uh, to rule out intussusception. Okay, someone said intussusception. Okay, what what is... Uh, uh, see if if there is a sore throat i repeat if there is a sore throat type of thing all right so in that case uh, uh, or in, you know he's telling infection thing so is it anyway also possible that uh, some of the other in the kidneys, that, in the kidneys, kidneys. yeah mm -hmm. so kidney is one of them mm -hmm. then some of the other dd with child or with rash like example what scarlet fever is one of them isn't it uh, can I say Epstein Barr virus? Is that is also associated with child with rash? What do you think, guys? I repeat my question. Epstein yes, Barr sir. virus is it also associated with child with rash? Like adolescent child, it could be little big child, it could be, but it can be right. So an oral cavity affected, uh, lymph node affected. It's more goes with scarlet, but they all are somewhere the DD. So in Epstein Barr virus, if you remember that one, hepatosplenomegaly or hepatomegaly or cytomegalovirus. So some of them, and also into susception. Some of you said into susception. Also in those kind of cases, like you know the DD plus the complication things. DD plus the complication. So that is the reason. Probably we might need the ultrasound actually. Yes. So DD wise, we should also remember that thing. We'll come to the complication soon, very soon. All right. So th these are the some of the you know investigation profile like you know CBC urine coagulation profile ultrasound stew. So these were the certain thing which we usually look for here actually. A special finding like the blood curves are presented with examiner like same like this. Uh, Dr. Daniel, like uh, uh, do you think you should have also asked this one? Uh, we'll give you a specific. Uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the you know the tail of the questions actually. Yeah, these are the small tail. Now it's a good thing you know we have good flow. We you know we get into deep thinking, but you know while checking the question, these parts like it's good that you know you guys are seeing it here. But sometimes you'll find examiner will give you a specific one. These are the thing you know. The, so the instructions are quite clear cut sometimes in the exam hall actually. So examiner will give you this specific. So what was examiner was having? Examiner was having the blood curve. Even though you are almost in the diagnosis, but there was a part actually like taking you know which was skipped, and that is the reason your time came like seven minute twenty second. But if you would have asked that one, that you know point eight zero second, you know would have been covered actually. But it's anyways, uh, it was a good case actually. So examiner will give you specific one i mean the blood curd especially my finding was with my blood curd and especially urine dipstick it was platelet count was normal and urine showing the proteinuria and the most importantly rbc because hematuria is one of the feature 
all right so these are the investigation everyone clear the investigation part then i can uh, proceed with the next next point everyone clear with the investigation part at least if you say yes then i'll proceed or you can ask me anything so i repeat again cbc urine coagulation profile those things which includes the platelet thing which is count is normal um, the stool and also the ultrasound everyone is clear thank you okay now let's get into the note part actually where is that um excuse me sir yes 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 dear doctor um uh, so in this question they have said that we need to explain the investigations but mm -hmm. if that's not the case and the question is just to give diagnosis and investigations then what do we do do we ask the examiner about the investigations yes. or do yes, yes, we yes. explain in no, the was, uh, you know the see explain the investigation you want to order so that that part is related to patient but you know they have clearly states that examiner will give you specific ones but no, you no, need to um, ask sir, uh, okay, sorry, sorry i'm um, cutting you uh, actually i understood this question but but what i'm asking it's in general that if oh, okay. it is given in the question uh, mm -hmm. that is you give diagnosis and investigations so mm -hmm. uh, do we explain the investigations to the patient and we ask from the examiner as well or do we just ask them from examiner and we do not both, explain both. them to the patient both both both, both. Oh, okay. yes mm -hmm. Yes, because uh, investigation, uh, because see, uh, in this one, explain the investigation you want to order, actually. Okay, so it yeah. means like, you know, mostly, you know, your case is started here. Like you remember, I, I told about task A and task B. Task A, usually history, then the physical examination, investigation, diagnosis. That's how it was given, most cases. Yeah. So in that part, actually, actually, the investigation automatically, you know, going with the uh, examiner and we ask, uh in generally the investigation things and also if there is a yes. management part we also tell the patient actually so it depends actually all right but oh. usually investigation if there is a scope you should try to uh get to both actually but sometimes you don't know the examiner is having the finding so at least there is an office test available this question usually help us in that way but in this question as we mentioned that clearly it was given but uh your question that you know investigation means what investigation you usually we also ask the Examiner, we like to do this investigations actually, and do we have any office test? Actually? And if that question also includes oh, okay. management, in that case, when we start tell the yeah. diagnosis, then we also add that one. I would also like to order this, this test. Now another thing is coming. If I'm in the GP setting, I will tell three or four name. Then I will tell, okay, we'd like to refer you, and in future the specialist will probably will add these investigation. Okay, so that one we also need to keep it in mind in that case. Yes. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Okay, this, that was a very intelligent question, I must say. Yes. All right, anyone? Very nice question. Any this kind of question in mind before we, I get into the HSP case? All right. So as I mentioned, uh, it, was, it was actually the type B one. Okay, is my screen things are visible, guys? Screen and all these things are visible, guys. Just checking voice, audio, video. All right. And this was if the history came, you, you have to also add the you have to also take specially rash history. I repeat, specially you have to take rash history here with discharge. So that could be little new to you. Okay, but I explained already. Now HSP childhood chest, which I prepared for you. So this was your case, uh, rash from uh, leg to buttock. This is the main thing. Some of the certain history given, no fall in this history, excluding probably the child abuse thing history. Uh, this is one of the very important point, like upper respiratory tract infection, all right? And rash distribution important, leg to buttock. Physical examination uh, is par parpura and non-blanching. So these are two keyword for us. Uh, some of the finding also given here, like in urine dipstick, RBC things, these were some are positive. All right. Now this was our task and uh, both doctor performed actually, like uh, Dr. Farwa, I think first time. So I think she forgot one, two points. And uh, Dr. Daniel, it was good, but Dr. Daniel also forgot to ask this part, I guess. So yes. All right. Now let's get into 
this one, like how it should be started. Our case was explain diagnosis. So I think both doctor did well. I think they were explaining the diagnosis well. So everywhere there is mark. So for di making diagnosis, you heard about it, very commonly asked question. Or sometime, you know, I'll be also telling, you know, what is that? Like very quickly, they, before you tell that one, uh, the patient will tell, okay, what is that? Okay. Now condition, like, you know, inflammation of the blood vessel of the skin. Uh, my formula, whenever possible, try draw something. At least I draw a blood vessel. Okay, nothing else. Okay, so that causing rash, it can cause to involve the blood vessel, of the kidney, intestine. Or just draw a few things a little bit, you know, just like an eye wash. Now, what was triggering? Like Dr. Daniel was also telling um, that probably the viral infection thing that is triggering like that condition. And if we say like, you know, uh, HSP, you know, antibody thing that is developed, which is attacking our own body tissue. Right? So there's the autoimmune properties there. So if you tell about this thing, autoimmune, so make it as a formula, like there'll be a lot of condition you will find autoimmune. Okay, so when you tell autoimmune, what triggering it, and lastly add that one, and the antibody that is producing attacking our own body tissue. So that's how we explain autoantibody. If you just tell autoantibody to a patient, this is a medical term, so they might not understand. So you have to later add that one, antibody attacking our own tissue and the blood vessel. All right. And why we are thinking, like I like the Dr. Farwa, uh, she started nicely actually that by telling why we think it is HSP because some of the positive point from here, she was trying to bring here. So that was also a good start actually. Okay, so you can always tell that one because we are thinking this is the point is at present. That's why we're thinking this is HSP. All right. Now, condition common in children in this, this is the year. It uh, outcome is good with the treatment. Uh, this one we need to remember. It is a condition affecting kidney mostly like we need to also highlight and that is causing usually hematuria. That's how we find the hematuria and also uh, glomerulus is involved because autoimmune glomerulus get hampered. That's why the protein also comes. Okay. So some of the thing that is explained, it can also affect the gut, causing abdominal folding of bile can lead to obstruction. And this is the main reason of doing ultrasound. But I would also like to add ultrasound, uh, you know, doing thing because uh, to exclude some other DD. So that point maybe in other haven't tell you yet actually. But doing ultrasound. Sometimes, because I have seen not only here, I also have seen ultrasound things sometimes in Scarlet and some other cases they can do, but you have to justify why you want to do it actually, okay? But make sure you're not doing unnecessarily, this is the thing. And now investigation part, and definitely, definitely you have to tell this one, pediatric specialist, child specialist. If you don't specifically tell this word, there will be cutting off mark, all right? Admit to hospital, seen by it specialist other possibilities now this point i think none of my doctors have used is it dr farwa dr daniel any one of you have used this part other possibilities sir i did say that uh, to exclude the serious disorders but i didn't name them okay you didn't name <laughs> yeah them. um dr daniel case also similar to exclude other yeah same way okay um, that is okay, guys, but uh, if you can remember that formula I told you, if I have time, like, see, it does not take that much time from me. Like, you know, in investigation to rule out some other possibilities like meningitis, leukemia, ITP. I'm technically telling the DD to my patient. Okay, so uh, because there is a provision, there is a case we saw, well, some of the doctors were failing because they are not telling the DD. Uh, some of the doctors are telling the DD, that's why they are getting some more mark count to that point so after that we decided you know when we were preparing that no in those cases we'll always try to add our cases like no matter dd it is mentioned in the question or not mentioned we will go in this way that you know we're going to run some investigation to rule out other possibilities like this 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 i like to mention these points and i find out my marks came better okay i have seen that one with my marks as well. so when i mentioned that one because you see like everyone is getting four, you know, out of seven, they're getting four or some cases five, but not that. So that, there must be some marks in their hands actually. 
yes that depends on you know very nice flow and things yes now i like to order these are the investigation already you know i need to talk to my examiner for now this part all of you guys i think both dr farwa and dr daniel is that all right so you see there is a turning over examiner will give you blood cut showing normal platelet blood showing rpc so a part that is dropped actually okay Social Dr. Daniel, everything was perfect, but one part was dropped actually, yes. All right. Now, few questions they will ask you, you know, sometimes like, is it, it, can it be meningitis? Can it be leukemia? So this will be, will be the question. Then sometimes, you know, the role player overreacted, they start crying. So don't worry, you know, things will be fine. You have to tell, okay, there's a case, you know, psychiatry agitated patient, you know, you have to, do, you know, deal that one. That's the funny case, actually. That was my exam case as well, by the way. All right. So, uh, treatment of HSP. I this part I took from RCA. So let's just check one more time how things are with. Usually you don't need antibiotic, any medicines actually. Uh, GP may prescribe the prednisolone, uh, help with severe tummy pain and severe joint, because prednisolone also has analgesic thing property as well also helpful in preventing kidney problem all right that's uh, from the rch guideline we will also give paracetamol ibuprofen as analgesic for joint pain and general relief uh, this one also uh, this part is a little bit taken from the rch long time follow-up so please add this one in your bucket so hsp has a long time follow-up like wherever there is long time follow-up you have to Tail in that way. Long follow-up with your doctor is important. If you just follow up, there might be cutting off mark. They are always ready to cut off your mark. 50% of children have HSP will get it again. Now, none of you mentioned this part. So I like to cut some mark here, actually. Okay, this was I was trying to ask, and but time was finished with Dr. Daniel, I think. Yes, so 50% uh, of children have HSP will get it again, actually. So that question might come from the role player, or you have to tell it actually. Not telling it might be cutting off marks. So this part is important. Similar, like can we compare and contrast things now? Uh, remember, child with vomiting, there was a condition we learned, and in that one, there was, um, you know, it came back. There was chance like 0. 0.5 to 1%. What was that condition? Anyone? And that pyloric stenosis. Exactly, pyloric stenosis. Now, so guys, compare and contrast is always important, actually, so that you can remember things, actually, because by the time you will get into exam, there will be a lot of things to remember. So HSP, uh, we found one thing. This is like chance of coming back. Pyloric stenosis, also chance of coming back. So two similar reading in that way. Few children have kidney damage because of the HSP, and which may happen in the first week of illness. There may be a delay of the week and the bounce rate before it appears. And your children, doctor, want to test the urine sample and the blood pressure in the several times after the HSP goes away. So please, please, please add this one. This one, none of you did, actually. It's also in the guidelines, actually, in the follow-up. So see, in this part of the HSP, the follow-up has a big role to play. So even in the follow-up, there would be urine samples and the blood pressure. All right? So this is important. Check should be continued at least for six months. With a final check at the 12 months. So smartly using the four, I just mentioned that one. All right. So a few points. Uh, this one I like to highlight a little bit. Let's see. You know, there's some diagnostic property. Maybe useful more for MCMCQ, but at least if you just see and just get a little idea like at least two of the following if present we call it hsp this is to increase the knowledge actually the one of them is parpura i mean the associated with the rash one age is less than 20 years pain blood vessel uh, so parpuric thing one of the diagnostic thing parpura and plus one of the following that means abdominal pain which is showing immunoglobulin A. 
Now, this is another key point here. Arthritis, kidney involvement. That is hematuria. Why our case is HSP? Now, when you are telling your patient why this case is HSP, one of them was rash, another clinical finding was the hematuria. Okay? That's how you should tell. All right. No specific diagnosis, IG elevated, platelet count is normal, urine showing, RBC. Everyone clear about the investigation at least, guys? Investigation, so IgA. IgA histopathology, can we add that one? So do you understand what thing is missing from investigation also? Everyone, IgA, that is, you know, diagnostic, yeah. Not diagnostic, but uh, it has a role to play. Histopathology, IgA deposition. All right. So many of the doctors are not using. So now IgA, how do I get to know IgA? By what process I can do this test, guys? By kidney biopsy? Kidney biopsy, yes. There's no other way. Very, very important, guys. So you see, no nodes, none of the nodes were involving that one. So probably, if we add that word, kidney biopsy, to see, Okay, clear guys? So do you understand what is missing from Marwan and Karen? Everyone clear? So this is the corrections. Uh, sir, there is a question like in what cases we do kidney biopsy? Kidney biopsy is, you know, uh, see, whenever there are hematuria cases, most of the time we do biopsy. Like, you know, if, like, you know, if it is not due to some other thing, like, you know, coagulation things, we take the history and all those things. If it's not ruled out, you need to do typing. If it's a kid and coming with a hematuria and this kind of thing, you, first of all, you need to make a diagnosis. Is it a nephrotic syndrome or is it a nephritic syndrome or is that HSP or what is it? What is it? To know the typing then, you know, especially uh, after doing the sydney you know, normal blood and the urine, then we put an option, complement, and also later we put an option of the biopsy. Okay, to know the typing actually. Yes. Thank you. Everyone clear the investigation? So a new thing to add. And you will mention it, why you want to do kidney biopsies, you know, IgA. The examiner will understand this doctor is very smart. All right, so these are the certain extra So that's why I, I just put some of the references. So see, this is diagnostic reference. So another one I say like everywhere it was mentioned and this is clearly missing in a lot of areas. So also check in Marwan, also check in Karen and practice with your partner. At least every case is practice two times. Guys, let me know when you need a break for prayers. So I can give you five, 10 minutes break because we are done with the Atari time. I think uh, some of the countries also need times actually, no worries. Or we can do go for uh, another role play, let me know. Uh, uh, some doctors like Dr. Vafi, complement level in case of HSP, uh, not very important for me, but if it is nephrotic, nephritic, I would like to involve them, okay? If nephrotic, nephritic, I would like to involve more than. All right, guys. So guys, let me know. Uh, just write in that break or continue one more. I mean, role play. Okay. Okay, like, okay, let's uh, continue then. Mm -hmm.
let me know like maybe after the, this one maybe we give a uh, at least five minute break for some doctor need to pray actually in between this is ramadan actually so uh, this one case is coming so who wants to do the next one okay let's take the name i don't take that much time for the next one because initially it takes time as the case progresses it it's get more faster who wants to do next one my dear doctors uh from the names dr abraham dr amber dr arman anyone and then dr mina dr mustafa dr nimmi anyone uh, dr wahida you want to try or um, like either response with yes or either uh, just response next day I, so one one of the responses. No way! Yeah, sorry, next day. Okay, no way. Okay, no way. Okay, that break my heart. Anyways, okay, no worries. Doctor uh, Sanduni, Doctor Sally, all the doctor name with R or S want to try. How about Doctor Oishi? You want to give a try today? Doctor Taiba, you want to give a try today? Okay. at least try dr arif i i can go with dr arif i think or uh, dr badal can step in okay someone has to do so guys <laughs> no worries okay uh, anyone can tell okay uh, apart from doctor uh, oh, okay yeah i think strom going on someone message me yeah so we'll keep the recording don't worry in bangladesh i think strom going on i hope so covid is washed away with the strom and whatever anyways uh, dr no ji you want to try uh, my dear doctor or Yeah, you can try to, you can switch to uh, dr tamanna you can switch to mobile data i would suggest okay in that case it will be better sometimes okay and any other my dear doctors dr wafi i can go with you dr wafi then all right this this time in hi how are you doctor i'm fine thanks in yourself how's yes. your neck uh it's good good now but you know uh, because of you yeah. know a lot of messages and things are coming we are also very disturbed actually like oh, okay. uh, you know you know especially you can understand like in the countries <laughs> and, and everything you know it's not a uh, developed country especially bangladesh and um, also i'm stuck here and secondly I just you know bad news is coming every because i'm connected to so many doctors and mm -hmm. personally involved like you know messages coming like okay my family get positive i got mm -hmm. positive like i think in our country is is the only uh, maybe place uh, where i think 3000 or 4000 uh, are the number of cases and 400 doctor get affected i think sure. nowhere it actually so uh, you can understand the ratio and yeah. for pp this thing doctors are looking for pp and things i think a lot of doctors i saw also nepal sri lanka they are also looking for pp in india mm. the strikes things are going on i think everywhere yeah and even uh, we don't know even from i think uh, some countries i think uh, even those countries are exporting pp i think uh, sometimes not the good quality and some people also make it as a business even in this uh, yes. situation that you know like uh, you can understand you know those people at least should have little humanity but other time they do illegal business that is okay but now if it's little bit thing happen like how bad it could be anyways like that's the thing doctor like we can reset the timer mm -hmm. and i'll put this case for you so two minutes yes
Okay. Oh, oops. Okay. 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 Hi, Doctor. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks. And yourself? Um, okay. right. I'm good. Thanks. Yeah. Do you understand the case? Um, yes. All right. Mm. Okay. So uh, there's the you know the uh, patient parent is waiting for you. You can proceed with the case. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Dr. Wafi, one of the doctors here. May I confirm your name and age and your child's name and age? Oh, all right. My name is uh, uh, John, actually. And yeah. uh, my kid's name is Paul. And yeah, so you can call me John. Yeah. Okay. Nice to meet you, John. And nice yep. to meet you, Paul. Okay, John, uh, from the notes, I can see your child has uh, been unwell for the last three days and he's having a very, very high temperature. And... Um, he, um, his blood pressure is falling. So I would just like to quickly um, start him on IV fluids and then um, explain what's happening. Is that okay? I think that's all cool. Okay. And um, just one question. Did you uh, try and give him any paracetamol in the last three days? Uh, uh, for his fever, yes. Yeah. And did it work? No. Okay. And you haven't noticed any red tongue or um, peeling of the hands or anything like that? No, nothing like that. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, John. So from well, what's written in the file and from uh, what you've told me so far, I'm suspecting that your child most likely has um, is suffering from a condition called sepsis. So basically, a sepsis is a form of severe infection. Okay, that can um, follow an upper respiratory tract infection. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So. Um, this can also lead to symptoms like because the body is not able to fight off the infection, the child um, deteriorates very quickly, okay, causing symptoms like um, lack of interest in food, having cold um, skin, okay, because obviously after a fever, if they have prolonged fever, the child can also become very cold as well after a few days, okay. Um, then obviously you'll have, um, you know, uh, it can come with a rash as well, okay, uh, and you know, rash can typically appear on the lower trunk and legs, okay? But mm -hmm. um, we still have to rule out other uh, conditions that can come in a similar way. For example, what we call henoch shonline purpura. Although in this case, because there is no um, tummy pain or rash on the buttocks, but less likely. The other thing I was thinking that it could be a bleeding disorder, which we still have to rule out. Um, All right. Okay, but usually bleeding disorders usually don't... Uh, present with a high fever, usually don't. Uh, so again, it's probably going more towards a sepsis. Okay, so um, are you with me so far? Yeah, right. Uh, any other questions before I we discuss a management plan? Uh, is this a very serious condition? Uh, well, because he's actually running a high fever and his blood pressure is falling, it, it, it seems like it, it is a very serious condition at this stage and would require mm. prompt treatment. So um, right. as part of the management, I would like to admit your child, okay, and oh. obviously start him on IV fluids, and then obviously okay. um, take basic blood investigations, like, you know, your full blood count. So it's basically in the medical term we call septic workup. So it usually involves a full blood count, okay, um, a right. chest x-ray, all right, this will help rule any uh, infection in the chest, uh, a urine microscopy and culture, okay, all right. and... Um, it will uh, blood culture as well because it's a very high fever. And then, um, you know, depending on the findings, uh, we may also need to do a CT scan and possibly a lumbar puncture, okay, to rule out any uh, possibility of meningitis, although there is no neck stiffness, but uh, some cases of meningitis can also uh, present without neck stiffness. So just to rule right. um, that out, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, then Great. after taking the bloods for basic investigations, I would also like to do a blood gas as well to make sure that, you know, the oxygen level in the body is at an appropriate level, as well right. as um, an electrolyte um, level assessment to make sure that the salt content in his body, in medical terms we call electrolyte, is within the normal um, limits, okay? Uh, for, and then okay. after this investigation, I would like to just uh, uh, quickly take, uh, start your child on an antibiotic. So, and then I'd call my senior, okay, to assess your child. And then depending on the um, blood results, we may need to change the antibiotic. 
Um, and in this right. case, as your child is um, not feeding, so most likely the antibiotic will be given um, intravenously, okay? And your All child right. will be monitored. Are you with me so far? Because yeah. I know it's Great. a lot to take in. Uh, yes. But if you yeah, have yeah, any yeah, questions yeah. or don't understand, please. I'll, I'll ask differently, yes. All right. So now um, your child will be given antibiotics, okay? So as to how long, it will depend on his response. But um, given his condition, he may need to stay in hospital for some time. So do you have All any right. other kids at home? No. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, but um, would you like me to call someone to be with you at this time? Uh, no, it's okay. Like, you know, if, like I'll call my wife later. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, okay. So he'll start antibiotics. So once um, after having antibiotics for a for some period of time, we may then decide to switch to oral to at least complete the course. Okay. And okay. it's advisable that after treatment, he goes to um, the GP for review. And um, I'd also like to suggest that other family members um, stay up to date with the immunization. I would also right. like to maybe suggest the other members also. The other sir, like, you know, like me and other family members, uh, is this a contagious disease? Uh, well, at this stage, I'm suspecting it could be, it could be. So that's why it's um, advisable to get tested. And because it seems like it's a serious condition, I'd also like to um, notify Department of Health as well. Okay. Right. And um, you know, Department of Health so that, you know, it's just mainly for contact tracing as well to look for any other sick children or people that your child may have been in contact with. And right. um as it is an infectious condition, I would also suggest after getting tested, depending on the test results, that um, other family members also get treated uh, prophylactically. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, are you with me? So everything's clear. Yeah. Any clear. questions? Um, so, uh, thing is, like, since uh, Paul is going to uh, uh, daycare, so. Yeah. Um, is it possible that you know uh, he can get this thing from that place as well, or other um, kid can be involved there? It, it's it is possible. So for which I would so after which you know Department of Health will probably also go to the school and check to make sure that other children are not having any contagious disease or similar symptoms. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's great. Any other question? Uh, no, so far that's okay actually. Yes. Yeah. But don't worry. I mean, it's good that we've you brought him to the hospital we'll try our best to um you know make him better and you know we expect that he should make a reasonably quick recovery yes okay. um thank you john thank you all right well dr Wafi, i think uh, good job i think uh, as far as i remember very less thing you left actually mm -hmm. uh like few of the things like uh, very very important uh, one thing, like, you know, um, to all my dear doctors, like, um, if it's a case, which is an emergency already mentioned, uh, now there could be two things, like one in the middle part, I think Dr. Wafi, as he mentioned that, um, like, you know, I, I would like to hospitalize uh, the patient and thing. Uh, that's an, one way. Another way it can be in the beginning, uh, we usually, uh, turn to the examiner and ask about like, you know, uh, is my patient vitally stable to, you know, continue actually? Yes. Uh, sorry, doctor, but they already given the vital signs. So do we still need to ask? Uh, in that case, you know, that's controversial actually, you know, like uh, even if it's given, like, you know, uh, uh, like we can use it smartly, like, you know, uh, as far from the note, I can see the vital uh, my patient vital is not stable, um, hemodynamically not stable, so probably I would like to take the patient to uh, emergency cubicle mm -hmm. and start few of the thing. So then, you know, you can ask the examiner, you know, is my patient stable so that I can continue, actually. Okay. So that's how, you know, few things we ask in that way, actually. Mm. So this is one way it could be. Another way it can be to... Um, like you know in the beginning the, in the in the middle part you mentioned and you as it's like you know the main part for the examiners giving mark point of view it is mentioned in that way um, assess the severity of the condition that's the main part so you 
basically you know able to assess the severity so you will get the tick eventually actually so all the incubation you know emergency cubicle thing those things were mentioned that was not the part the part was actually to assess the severity of the condition actually so that's why we usually tell the cases in that way all right so it looks a little bit more severe in that way actually it's like a kind of highlighting actually and another way why i mentioned in that way because so that we don't forget in mid in the bit you know in between that you know do i need to hospitalize some people fail to mention that when i want to hospitalize i think they just uh, keep going okay i'll do investigation this in that thing but if you don't say in this kind of cases i like to hospitalize the patient immediately and um, start the iv line and access like if you don't mention this thing it would be a failed case definitely yeah yeah tissue if like you know yes definitely like in in cases um, now there's a part i didn't you know first of all like you know it's because we're not showing face but unless if i'm not crying you, you don't need to give me tissue okay so this is the one thing there's a case actually the uh, the role player was not crying and you know someone is offering tissue actually and uh, the role player was somehow disturbed actually even because of the tissue actually so the tissue part guys you know please you know we'll be telling more in the psychiatry the tissue part to give the patient or you, know, you can just uh, like you know just the box you know you can just forward to them only if the patient is started weeping or they become suddenly sad hiding their face and things like that only in that case okay dr wafi so uh, so this is one of the things yes, okay. so, or so you can ask about you. that one yeah you can ask rather than you can ask in that one do you need anything do you need a moment uh, rather than in this case the better would have been uh, if I, suddenly i become mute or sad uh, in that case do you need a moment can i help you with something a glass of water okay um, do you need any tissue Okay, so th these are the keywords in in this type of cases actually. But if the patient started weeping suddenly, the exam hall, um, in that case you have to just push the like tissue box. Yes, all right. So this is one thing. Like so far, it's not a like mistake or anything, anything so far. Now let's get into the case straight away. Oh, it's our case. Yeah. So child with rash, septicemic workup, few uh, like these are the points to be um, remembered actually. As you can see, seeking help from senior. So this is one of the thing. See, like they have specifically mentioned, that's why I was telling Dr. Rafi that, you know, it's better we tell the examiner, involve the examiner so that it looks according to like this because the examiner will have a boxes near to him. So he just give tick in that way. So early recognition, understand the severity. So seeking help from senior actually. So have you seen this one? You know, previously one thing we also saw that you know we might need call the pediatric uh, specialist or I'll call my senior as well. Okay. So especially because the case is quite emergency. SSA airway breathing, administer oxygen. All right. Uh, rapid vascular access. I'd like to open an IPV channel. And I'd like to start with an antibiotic therapy. So child with rash in this kind of cases, definitely antibiotic therapy. And carefully titrated IV fluid resuscitation, and I'll keep going with the IV fluid. And you know, uh, do tell uh, a bit thing about if necessary about the inotropes. You remember that previously I show a chart which was mentioning about the inotropes. Uh, can anyone remember what was the indication of using inotropes or the adrenaline? Anyone? After giving uh, 40 uh, ml per kilogram yes. uh, of fluid, if uh, the uh, circulatory system is not uh, okay, not that case we can yes. use yes. the Yes, like so our things would be like that, like, you know, we'll give the patient the IV fluid, we'll start at like a 20, and, uh, but you know, if things are not working, we would like to increase it up to 40, and even if it's not working uh, after the 40, we might need to administer adrenaline actually. So now that clears the adrenaline part. So you see in septicemia workup, you need to uh, involve these points actually, certainly, all right. So source of control, like frequent management and assessment. So it depends, like if it's a 
particularly they are asking you to tell more about meningitis you tell more about meningitis if the thing is going towards the septicemia but this is the main thing all those things are important okay so you know assess and reassess like see you know there's another option reassess so don't forget that one that you know we'll be reassessing actually now i think usual cases like you know when the case started we um ask the examiner and when we ask in that way is my patient is uh, okay enough to continue and he said yes his patient is uh, fine now to continue with the case then it, it means what i'm reassessing in that way just telling technically actually so that's why that points i was telling that in the beginning that's why people like to do more because the a lot of points like up to you see three and also nine you know so four points out of this eight or nine you are covering easily yes and also dr Wafi, you know talk about the source i mean you know uh, daycare i i think dr Wafi, like daycare you didn't mention like i mean you didn't ask me in between like uh, no i didn't yes but like I, you know so so yes so this is one of the point uh, even though the history was not involved but this kind of question we can ask the patient actually uh, I think your pay, baby is going to daycare or is your baby going to daycare school? Okay, you know, smartly asking that, you know, okay, is going daycare. So in that case, you mentioned about contract tracing, but it need to be involved. It, is the kid is going to daycare because it is, isn't it, it's important like daycare or the preschool or whatever, but two years kid. So I don't think so preschool is applicable or school is applicable. So daycare is applicable here. All right. So we need to also involve the daycare. Otherwise, I think you did really good job. And maybe the early part that, that depends on people. I personally prefer telling the emergency thing in the beginning because of at least one, two, three, and four, all these points easily can be covered actually, right? And then, you know, we see it's, if it's the meningitis and septic thing, thing, we can tell like, you know, before uh, going for investigation, I, like, I would like to start with an anti IV antibiotic therapy because the situation is quite great at this moment. All right, so, and, also to exclude the diagnosis and also to uh, exclude the other different shields like it. I like to do the CBC with C, reactive protein with the ESR and uh, with other investigation. And, and the way Dr. Wafi was telling, I like that way actually. He was telling CBC because of, I like this um, blood culture because the uh, fever was high up. If you can tell, that's a more nice way actually. Yes, all right. Yes, I think also, yes, I was just about to tell you. The, now coming to the investigation. Investigation, you add CBC, uh, blood culture. Most two important things, CBC, blood culture, these two things, office test, like includes the urine, ECG, all these things. And liver function test is also included here because septicemia can go anywhere in the body. So liver function test was missed here, I guess. And apart from that i think uh, he mentioned about ct i remember he mentioned about lumbar puncture he mentioned about chest x-ray i think another point electrolyte he mentioned because many babies uh, electrolyte because they might have caesar they might have some other issues electrolyte or glucose this two word you can use it anywhere in the pediatric cases electrolyte and glucose you can use anywhere yes since the situation is grave you can always add the abg remember one thing if situation is grave you can always add the ABG, all right? For chances of dehydration, you can also add ABG. Everyone clear with the investigation or you want me to repeat the investigation, guys? Very important that investigation should not be missed. Uh, you can write something in the boxes, so let me see it. Clear, everyone? So CBC with C-reactive protein with yes, sir. Um, culture then the office test urine and ecg liver function test and of course in the tertiary level definitely so we have the opportunity to give also ct and the lumbar puncture also chest x-ray and uh, electrolyte and you know blood glucose yes right and abg since the condition is quite serious all right okay so up to this clear right and all right so this part I add here, this part, see, liver function test was there. Mm -hmm. The coagulation thing. So these are 
common thing in case of kids. So meningitis, that was the case. So is my patient is embryo stable or not? I like to start with some management. All right. So that's the thing. So if already things are given, um, you can just tell the. Uh, but it's better to ask actually. Is my patient is embryo stable to continue actually? Or you can just like you know, since I see from the chart that patient is having this and this thing, so I think the patient is really unstable. Uh, so the examiner, I, uh, I like to proceed with some of the emergency uh, management. So it's okay. So you just tell the whatever you to do. Is my patient stable now? Yes, you can continue. Then you continue. So that way it would be better. So see case of septicemia, a few of the words that is mentioned. Uh, right. Uh, it started because there was a history of infection. A few of the things that can be the critical error that you know it can be prophylaxis not mentioning the prophylaxis, contact child care. Now, one thing, uh, Dr. Wafi, like, did you mention about family you mentioned, but did you talk about the antibiotic? I mean... For the family, no, I just said get tested and treated accordingly. I didn't specifically mention, but because it will depend on the cause, because I didn't assume immediately that it was bacterial. I thought maybe it can be viral as well. So that's why All I right. didn't... Okay. Yes. Yeah. But I checked two of the guidelines, RCH, Karen, Marwan, like, and also a few of the other books actually check everywhere. They mention about profile access and they elaborate a little bit more about the profile access. Actually, everywhere I found that they were talking about the profile access and especially um, you can, you can always use the word if like, so that's okay. So profile access, contact the childcare that was missed. Uh, this one you mentioned, I remember, like, you know, uh, the health department. Sorry, just to cut you, so for all of these guidelines, they're assuming that it's bacterial. Yeah, like few things, you know, we, that's the reason, you know, you can always go to your examiner. Like, do you examine is there any kind of office tests and things that are available, actually, especially when you were talking the investigation, you can ask that one, actually. But probably in this case, it was not, it was not, uh, protocol wise things were fine, but when we think about uh, Neisseria meningitis, first of all, like septicemia, uh, a very common case, Neisseria meningitis. Um, most cases, that's the bacterial thing that is involved. So that's why we're thinking in that way. This antibiotics, because of that thing, because if it's vital, even what, what do we do in while treating the meningitis? We at least try with antibiotic. Things are not working, we think viral. By the time we keep doing the investigation. So that's the protocol. All right, so see, they mentioned and highlighted about the antibiotics actually. Ceftriaxone is so commonly practiced. Yes. Now, someone said it can be scarlet. Okay, is there any, any kind of sore throat, my dear doctor? Is there any kind of sore throat, my dear doctor? Can we check in the question? I think here there is no sore throat, isn't it? It is, but it's a good DD. Someone said it's scarlet. I'm happy, but is there any sore throat? You see, like there's no such sore throat, isn't it? All right. So see, antibiotic, uh, pediatric surgeon, tertiary level hospital. These were the things I was telling. DHAs, vaccination, prophylaxis. Now, critical error, not recognizing septicemia, no failure to give the antibiotics. So that's why I was telling, you know, you should be a little bit more elaborating the antibiotic, rifampicin and self -trixone. Please, my suggestion, a DTK and someone said it's okay. Yes, possibility. A severe pneumonia can be turned out to be septicemia. Is it possible? Yes, quite possible. Well done. So these are the things important here. So if, when you talk about the family member, family members uh, giving prophylactic, what antibiotic you're giving, what about their vaccination, these, up to this, it has to be involved, this case. All right. Okay, so prophylactic. Uh, so this one I took from book, I think maybe a handbook, there was something written. Prophylaxis treatment to the family. Antibiotic to household contact within 24 hours. Rifampicin, 
12 hourly for two days you see how they are highlighting things you see this one guys so prophylactic treatment to family antibiotic to the family members in mentioning the antibiotic name so either you name nifampicin either you name ceftriaxone you have to name it actually if anyhow pregnant or something then you cefotaxime but since our case is not related to pregnancy thing you know, we don't need to use this one also i have to notify so these are the critical one actually so dr rafi good job but i think maybe we, you can little bit just add the prophylactic treatment little bit i think uh, what treatment and the daycare center in the child so this two point to be added i think yes any question guys so that was the case i think two cases we did actually that i mean septicemia and the meningococcemia okay so it will come mixed up one case will come they will be more focusing you know whether you are involving the septicemic management or not i repeat they will check whether you are involving all these points so now guys next time we will be discussing with your partner when you are talking you think that you know have you touched these all nine points these are called marks if you touch all nine you will get you know six out of seven the rest one depend on your flow actually okay uh, do you know this thing that listening proper listening also carries mark do you know that doctors like you know uh, if you listen to your patient properly that also carries mark is it so that part just be careful you know i check the plab directory i check the mc directory proper listening to patients also carries mark actually all right any 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 question guys or uh, happy with the management yeah so few things are also given here you can also check this one few possibilities i few thing i wrote so see tertiary level septic workup one case from handbook yes What do you think, guys? So, uh, can we do the last case? I think, or give time five minutes for break. Yeah, we'll upload. Don't worry. Yes. No worries. Yeah, today I have to you know add few things because there's two cases that was new. So one of them is this one. is a little bit new uh, but we as a team will work together on this one to add few because that was a past feedback but even though i think we can work on few things especially the education uh, counseling and education we can work on that part actually a little bit more anyone anything my dear doctors or you know you get you guys get bored you can tell <laughs> and what is okay so we can bring the third one and finish it okay so who is coming next my dear doctors dr ushna noor you want to or dr vigna geeta anyone so can i do okay dr dr bira want to do all oh, right actually no worries and next day i want to also see dr linda dr mustafa kamal and, and dr rishi be prepared next day dr meena as well Uh, Doctor Haya, you can also you are good. I know Doctor Haya, so uh, be prepared next day. So uh, ready for the case with our resting time. I think when you need to pray as well. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, great. Put the timer.
Okay. Hi, Doctor. How are you? Hi. All right. Can I check your ID, please? Yes, sir. All right. Do you understand your case? Yep. Is your patient father waiting, John? And you can enter and start your case. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hi, John. Uh, my name is uh, Bira. I'm one of the junior doctors here. So, uh, how may I address you? Oh, you can call me John, yeah. And uh, what's your uh, kid name? His name is Paul. Okay, so um, John, from your um, uh, history given and the uh, notes, um, uh, mm -hmm. your baby has a condition uh, like rash and the fever. So can you further tell me something about the rash and the fever? Okay. Uh... As you see from the notes, doctor, like, you know, uh, that's given in the history that it started like, you know, four days back, the rash and, you know, then there was fever and there was some sore throat and we thought to come to hospital because it was not looking normal to me. So we are here, that's the reason. Okay. So, um, uh, so, um, so I have to explain only the diagnosis now. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay. yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, so, John, from the uh, notes given uh, uh, in your, uh, I um, the pos uh, from the positive findings which is given in your notes, like the fever and the rash and the appearance of the rash, uh, like it uh, you have uh, mm -hmm. it is given that it is a sandpaper-like rash. So, mostly, most likely, the diagnosis is called the scarlet fever. Um, okay, what's that, doctor? Uh, it's a bacterial infection actually, which is called, uh, which is caused by a bug. We can call that bug is group A Streptococcus pyogenes. All right. And uh, yeah, so this bug, uh, this is a bug which stays in the throat of our body. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. And it produces uh, some toxins which cause these symptoms like sore throat and then the fever and then the uh, symptoms appear. Okay. So the okay. first is the symptoms which uh, appears by the uh, this bug. They are the sore throat and the fever, and then the rash appears after the fever. So have you noticed that the rash appears after the fever, or it appears before the fever? No, I was not very sure about that one. Okay, okay. So um, uh, are you with me so far? Yeah, sure. Okay. So uh, for this. Uh, treatment is antibiotics we can give the antibiotics for your child and uh, mm -hmm. the antibiotics mm -hmm. are the penicillins which help in the resolution of the symptoms of uh, fall and uh, mm -hmm. is your child going to school uh the kid yeah yep. going to school okay, okay. so um he can uh, after taking the antibiotics he can uh, go back to school 24 hours after taking the antibiotic and he began to feel well and um, as i said this mm -hmm. bug it, mm -hmm. it produces a toxin so this toxin can affect the other uh, parts of the body like kidneys and but it it must but this can happen very rarely All right. okay mm -hmm. so you don't have to worry about it and okay. uh, uh, we, uh, for this purpose, we need to monitor your child's uh, urine out, uh, like urine output. If if any condition like can occur, uh, you can tell me if any complication can occur. So how do you, you want to, to confirm the case, doctor? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for this, uh, we have to do her uh, some blood tests, like uh, full blood examination and ESR and C-reactive proteins. And the most important, we will do that throat swab. Okay. All right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um. And how do you want now, to treat uh, Paul actually? Yeah. For uh, I, as I have already mentioned that I will uh, start giving him antibiotics the uh, for ten days the penicillins, and uh, the symptoms will be, uh, resolve after ten days. Okay. And if uh, in the meantime, if you notice any uh, complication or if the symptoms get severe, you can contact me and we will do further and we will, uh, if it's required, then we will admit the call and we will do further tests like uh, to rule out any complication or anything like that. 
All right. Great. Yeah. So, okay. uh, do you have any question? Uh, no further question. Thank you. And uh, okay. So here is the writing material I have. Uh, I'm going to give you so you can uh, study apart uh, from it. Great. Yep. Okay. Right. Okay. That is great. Yeah. Thank you. So All right. Thank you so much, actually. Okay. And when we'll come back again? You will uh, come back if uh, if any complication appears or if you feel that you are uh, the uh, the symptoms are uh, getting worse or if he's not feeling well, then you then you can come again. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, great. All right, Dr. Bira, uh, not bad, but uh, also some of the points have been missed actually. Um, yeah. Okay. Sir, it's, so it's uh, first time. So yeah. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Yeah, it's all fine. Well, it's first time. Okay. So good thing is, uh, uh, as you can see, there was some time left actually. Uh, but you know, I normally try uh, finishing the cases more properly, uh, quickly. As far as I remember, like even few of the thing I have to give you lead because normally they won't give you lead. First of all, like you know, you mentioned about. Uh, I think antibiotic only, but did you mention about analgesic as well? No, sir, I forgot. Okay, okay. so see, main problem is what? Sore throat, they came up. So, you know, you need yeah. to relieve the pain. So if you don't relieve the pain where there is, uh, pain is there and you're not relieving it, you know, mm -hmm. that's also not a good sign. Secondly, uh, dear doctors, I like to ask all of you, is steroid has a role here? Like example, prednisolone, a single dose, protexamethasan, a single shot. Is there, is, is there any role of that one? Okay. Uh, according to RCH guideline, if you see, it's mentioned. Uh, like it's, it was mentioned, corticosteroid can be considered in patient with severe pain, and dismiss it to single analgesics. So your way of telling should be that, you know, uh, I'll like to start with a simple analgesic like Panadol or Ibuprofen, but some cases the pain is not subsiding with this kind of analgesics. So in that case, we might be introducing corticosteroid, but that's only for the severe cases. And another thing you didn't mention, like, you know, like maintaining the hydration. Hydration maintain is very, very important, even though it can't be a case of typical dehydration case, but it is usually important. Like, you know, you mentioned uh, maintain the hydration of the baby. I'd like to maintain the hydration of the baby by giving some fluids and this thing. So you can always tell a few things like that. Okay, so this is the some of the management part. And also, like, you didn't involve the red flag. If you can remember the four R, Dr. Bira, did you mention about the red flags? I just mentioned about like uh, symptoms not relieving. Really you can come back. Yeah, yeah. No, but and here I, I said that it can affect on the kidneys. Yeah, I only mentioned. <laughs> okay. That. Okay. Like uh, so, but actually, thing is, there are some more points. Actually, I'm uploading that one in our messenger group. If you just check, guys, mm, some of the cases have, has more red flags. Some of the cases not. In this one, there are more red flags. Example, what, uh, not example, like what are the red flags here? First of all, like um, if the condition is not settling, baby is getting more toxic, this is number one. Then if there is respiratory distress or if there is any abnormal sound, like skin, which is we call strider, or if there is like change in the voice or drooling or even, you know, any neck fullness. So in that case, quickly report us. This is very, very important because you will have to, you know, you have time means, you know, a lot of thing you can introduce here. So red flag, you can add more points here, actually. So, so red flag, which is also, I feel it's important here, actually. All right. Now, one more thing, where is the problem? The problem is in the oral cavity. All right. So since it's in the oral cavity, uh, in the investigation, I think uh, what other things to be involved, like I'm asking generally, because we have a little short period of time, maybe. Uh, what are the investigation to be involved here? Anyone, anyone from the previous batch can also answer this one by unmuting, by in the chat box, or anyone let's participate. Like CBC, yes sir, urine dipstick, ECG, 
you know these are the common things but apart from that anyone throat swab okay throat swab definitely oral cavity so throat swab definitely without telling throat swab that's a direct fail like error okay someone said ultrasound yeah like that exclude the dds okay done anything else Actually, my eyes are looking for a one the point. Actually, it's a oral cavity, guys. So, uh, think about the other condition that is also involving oral cavity. Think from the MC clinical point of view, guys. Anything, Doctor Wafi, Doctor Daniel, Doctor Natasha, anything? Oh, sorry, can you repeat the question? What was the question? Oh, question was actually in the investigation. Apart from the CBC with ESR, urine dipstick, ECG. Glucose and some of the electrolyte thing, um, and also they add the you know throat swab definitely very very important. What else I think I, I can add here? In the uh, sir, is it extra uh, oral cavity? Extra oral cavity to rule what? Extra oral cavity in extra or nasopharyngeal? That's a different thing. Maybe oh, the lymph node examination. Lymph node examination is important, like you know, it's a but examination findings are given. It's not mentioned probably uh, the lymph node are not enlarged. Actually, I'm talking about one of the investigation which I feel could be added here. Actually, okay, Dr. Wafi added platelet. Okay, because of the coagulation profile. Okay, nicely said. Okay, add add that one. Let's add that one. Coagulation profile. Actually, you see in the kids, all cases we are adding coagulation profile. So make it as a habit. Actually, now WCC like. WBC you mean or the WC like you know cell counts are always there cell count cardiac those are all should be in the regular but since I was telling oral cavity so one of the point uh, do you give a second thought about the Epstein Barr virus guys do you give a second thought about Epstein Barr virus thing. Or when I said you know why we check the voice because this strepto thing can lead to peritonsillar abscess in future that can be deadly sometime so peritonsillar thing throats of those are there i was talking about another thing that is epstein barr virus so if there is epstein barr virus coming epstein barr virus what is the test tell me if epstein yes monospore test and epstein barr virus serology which one is more specific Serology. serology more specific so i would go with the serology then all right better to go with the more specific so i'd like to go with the uh, epstein bar virus serology then actually yes all right so this is guys important and you can also include ultrasound but since you already add one for epstein bar virus ultrasound you can also include for epstein bar virus right? so this is this is the extra thing like usually they look for Paul Bunnell test actually we learned in the MC MCQ, but you know, sometimes few things just a little bit forget when you come to MC clinical. The more specific one, better we remember. But if the case is Epstein virus, in that case, we definitely have to mention those, like monospore, Paul Bunnell, those things you mentioned. But the main thing that you have to tell Epstein virus. So, guys, is this clear? What one investigation probably was missing? You can check in RC's guideline, you can also check in the handbook, you can also check some of the other books. Like you know, which is related to uh, differential. Now, all we, all we have to read in future the books which are related to differential diagnosis. So, download some of the books, get some books of differential, and keep checking. These are the areas where they cut down the marks actually. All right. So, everyone thinks in you know, why we are getting four out of seven, four out of these are the reason actually. Okay. So, Epstein Barr virus, serology. Clear, guys? Everyone clear this part? Okay. So the two new thing at least came actually. Okay, let's get into this one. So this was a scarlet one, scarlet. Mm, I mentioned about A, you know, often some people say accidentally B, which is not right. So group A streptococcus. Okay, now the rash I highlighted, so how's the oral cavity? You can also add that one. Like there could be white coating over the papilla initially, then it goes away. It is also known as sandpaper. Now that's up to you actually, if you tell. 
Now, few things like CBC, ESR, throat swab. CBC, ESR, throat swab. So few, these are like mandatory, but to if you want to get the extra mark, or if I can tell in that way, uh, like I will also call my senior or you call pediatric register where uh, he may also include this is the way of telling include some other tests like now you tell like now what a few things you can always do which are mentioned here like you can say uh, clotting profile is fine here Now we can add this one. Epstein bar virus zero. Let's see. If you feel it's not safe for you to tell that one, like you know, put it on the senior or pediatric register. Okay, now some question from the role player point of view. Is it risky? Yes, it has some risks, can affect the kidney. So one thing you all can see highlighting kidney, they are highlighting kidney when my kid can go back to school. Okay, so 24 to 40. Now this question is important. All right, so, uh, so Dr. Bir actually uh, didn't went up to that level. Otherwise, I would have asked this question to go to 40 hours. So this type of question, be ready. When my kid can go home, when my kid can go to school. So every case is when you're preparing. I uploaded a few things. If you guys can see in, in our, uh, that group, uh, I mean, uh, try to buy, you know, those are from my MCMCQ. I'm sure they already have it. I told them the, to have this kind of sticky note. We used to also use this on MC, uh, MCQ, but in MC clinical, you see if that's the thing, especially the one with the notes, you write few key points in the front page, the one with the note, and you also have a backup page. So extra thing, you can also write in the back page and keep these things. Keep these things, these are really, really helpful. Believe me, like later, you know, it will be so helpful for you. If you maintain these kind of things, consider discharge. Now, this is like when my baby can be discharged. I didn't went up to that level as I mentioned because question was finished by Dr. Bira before that. So, consideration when pain is like gone and tolerating taking oral, you know, uh, fluid. So, we are admitting here. And about the antibiotic which I went to RCH, I checked, this is the antibiotic regimen given, and it was given for, for how many days, anyone knows? 10 days. 10 days, yes. So you also like now, you, very, very common error. Some people say seven days. Now what will happen? So not so improper treatment. Yes, yeah, so improper treatment, they might tell in that case. So in RCH is mentioned, 10 days. So you also mentioned 10 days, if you said. Uh, not that important to mention always dose. If you can, you do in that way, it's okay. But 10 days, that is like important. Or don't at least tell wrong thing. This is not appreciated in the main exam. Okay, I'm sharing this one, the link. You can just quickly click this one. Yes, or copy this one, paste. And here is a management given. It's evidence of airway thread. So you see, do you remember I said in the beginning of the today's class that um, airway is important. Upper airway obstruction with a uh, scarlet. Did I mention that one, guys? Do you remember, guys? Upper airway obstruction or upper airway. Yes. So it is very, very important. See, they also started the guidelines. So my first that word come up here actually. So this is very, very important. All right. So upper airway, they started in the same way actually. So if yes, take the management. If not, then, you know, you started in that way, give the treatment for the high risk group, then perform throat swab, common antibiotic, supportive management, even ENT consult. So this is plus minus ENT consult. So keep it as an additional point. Why ENT consult, guys? Because sore throat and ER very nearby. 
so eventually it, it is very high likely okay so ent concept actually all right so require uh, probably high risk people uh, require hospitalization moderate to severe degradation severe pain and such as simple so uh, in that case they need hospitalization now let's come to our case like which we were dealing in this one what do you think you know do we need now if there's a breathing problem you, you will you will get to understand very easily uh, you know when if you see something related to breathing thing airway obstruction management airway obstruction means like you know you probably need uh, to give you know the initially starting with oxygen or you might be needing intubation and this kind of thing the airway simple the airway like it depends okay so if you see this case do you think in this case required hospitalization guys what do you think No, sir. In this case, no hospitalization is required. But if any yes. um, sore, uh, like difficulty mm. in breathing, develop, then we have breathing, to yes. admit the child. Yeah, difficulty yeah. in breathing, like you know, straight away in hospital because you are getting into probably oxygen. If oxygen not working, then uh, probably you need intubation and certain other things. So it's definitely need hospitalization. But otherwise, required hospitalization. Now, this is a part to play, and this part. You know, you remember the other uh, doctor was mentioning like, you know, unnecessary hospitalization. If you mentioned there would be also cutting off mark, isn't it? What case I'm talking about? This case I'm talking about. Remember this case, the doctor also mentioned like he mentioned unnecessary hospitalization and he felt like because of that, there was cutting off mark. So I think we, we won't do unnecessary hospitalization. Okay. Someone said lethargic. Uh, lethargic. Mm, that's a good point. Mm, that's a good point. I think you are right, doctor. I think if we check the red flag, uh, among the red flag of uh, this one, Toxic appearance, uh, respiratory distress, stridor, um, trismus, drooling, hot potato virus, uh, neck swelling, acutely unwell looking kid. Yeah, on, on that part you can help me. Yes, I think I think I agree to that one. Okay. I'll take my word back. Yeah, that, that's a nice point. Yes. One of the red flag was here. Nice, nice catch, eh, Dr. Arman. All right, so this is one of the nice catch, I think. Yeah, so these are the, you know, some of the importance, like, otherwise, uh, otherwise, require hospitalization if after giving the treatment, still there is dehydration persist or severe pain unresponsive to simple analgesic, yes. Anything else, doctors? Like anything else? Yes, yes, we can ask. We can ask actually. Like we ask in that way, is my patient is stable to continue? Like we can always ask that one. Yeah, and this was that case I was talking about, I mean, this case. Okay. So also consider that one as very, very important. I mean, hospitalization or not hospitalization. Yes. All right, guys. I think, you know, we may also uh, need a little bit more extent, I think on the child with rash because I saw keep coming cases because we also have uh, uh, Kawasaki to play. And I would also like to guide, uh, give a little guidance on the eczema, eczema and seborrheic little bit so that 
all your cases are finished are finished very nicely all right so any anything else guys i think some areas there is also if there is calling them so i think i won't proceed that much actually we, we our next class would be as usual tuesday pray for my health and also mental things actually we all are stuck actually otherwise uh, everyone knows i love to take classes actually yes anything my dear doctors anything like feel free to ask because i am done with my iftar so i'm stable now actually for now those of namaz and things are coming you can quickly leave now finish the namaz and then all these things prayers anything dr wafi dr daniel like or uh, you can give me a question i can also check the reference yeah few thing i think i added newly right dr daniel i think compared to last batch i guess so yes yes very good yeah so try to add few things new here actually because uh, and you know this dr daniel you know you please remind me uh, okay. about this case i like to you know modify this case even though we have a little feedback on this case but still i like to modify this case a little bit because i feel the education section um, where is that i feel the that section even though the feedback was given like that but i feel still uh, what he told there i think what he was telling here i think maybe not that appropriate maybe he was telling more points the amount he said here it was i feel not sufficient to pass i think i was feeling so i'll i'll try to modify this one a little bit more actually okay so i'll keep in touch with you or uh, maybe some more points will yes, be coming. i have some notes about this case but uh, i will send you some yeah information yeah uh, mm -hmm. highlighted one you know highlighted one yeah like you know i mean uh, this one no this one i'll be uploading i mean one karen that one i keep it to me actually that i used like in as like in part one i used the john mothak highlighted that one i keep it to me but you know this one i'll be uploading i mean the one you saw today yeah this one will be uploading yes it will be uploaded in 5 10 minutes yes all right any questions please to this this one is going to upload any points my dear doctors this one i'll compile all things yeah we are making things more nice and nice in uh, have the plan to make things much more nice in coming days for mc clinical uh, i feel like it's quite possible to pass guys you know the thing i showed today like making small notes you know especially female doctors especially when they like to do this kind of work more especially sticky note you know last time i remember i have experience but i want my dear male doctors they can also do this thing okay yes so you know this is important to remember you know the when you keep this is small kind of sticky notes and small notes um, more smart people they keep a board and they you know pin up the small small things actually with pin actually those are incomplete you left hanging on your wall with a you know small pin and thing okay i'll rethink about that one that's how thing works here actually all right so this is usual and this is quite useful i believe in coming days actually and um, after class if there is a question guys you can ask in the group and you can ask in the messenger so these are the purpose we like to use the messenger actually like after class and also example like say feedback i'm just putting now or any questions now now you can ask because now i'm available but i know suddenly if you keep discussing you know it's just starting thing my mobile and this thing so any feedback and question of the class now appreciated to ask actually as i mentioned this message i like to convey my voice but when is my class you know this one you can always ask your friend actually like by inboxing dr sumit is very nice dr daniel impressor dr nathas all are helpful so you can ask simple thing to them actually so but this one is usually useful to carry quickly my voice actually so now any feedback or any question that if it comes to your mind about today's class please let us just post here actually okay so i'll give you feedback in that case all right so this purpose i like to use it actually have so it's clear actually and no personal things please in this group actually okay okay any other thing my dear doctors anything else i can help
Oh, sorry, you said no personal things. So what's the definition of personal? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I mean, personal means, you know, uh, oh. say example, like uh, study related thing. Like, you know, example, uh, doctor, did you upload this thing? Did you upload this thing? Like, if something is about to ask me personally, they can call me. Oh, okay. Yes. Like, but you know, if it's inquiry to, yes, yes, yes. Like, you know, if, if that is a class thing, like, you know, they can ask you actually okay. better, you know, a few days, you know, we all are a bit disturbed actually, you know, you can understand I'm also stuck here, not yeah. behaving as like normal, how usually I, I remain very cool actually, but now it is very disturbed actually. So every message is, you know, sometimes get uh, something bad actually, like already you have, if you go a little up, like, you know, one doctor has directly attacked. So that kind of thing, not appreciated actually uh, in, the, in the group, but study thing definitely, like, especially now, see, we just finished the class. So I'm expecting any question which comes from child with the rest, definitely you can upload here. And, you know, I'll have to answer that one. Yes. So every Yeah, but you know, yeah, but some doctor, you know, ask, you know, when is class, when is this thing? This thing should be asked each other. Like, you know, you, you guys all are like a team. And you guys can send friend requests in between each other and they can ask like, you know, if one is having little confusion, they can ask another actually first mm -hmm. to just to cross verify. And Dr. Daniel uh, is class monitor, also in Tessa, Dr. Sumit, they're very active. So people can also message them. If there's a general thing, they can also message them actually. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank All you. Right. Yes. All right, dear doctors, thank you so much. I hope so the session was useful. And as I mentioned, if anything came up in your mind about child with rash cases, feel free to ask today actually, yes, later. So ending up session now, all the best. <laughs>